At this pivotal time in humanity's evolution, we are beginning to remember our organic technology. A technology, when used correctly, can create an experience that the majority of the people the world over want to live. It is time to use this technology consciously for our own benefit and healing and no longer unconsciously for our own demise. We are divine creators, creating both our own personal experience and our collective experience moment to moment. We invite you to join us as we reawaken this technology through experiment and experience our power to create and manifest. Become part of the 3%. Good morning, everyone, or at least morning for me. Welcome to the Collective Imagination Show for this week. Uh, later in the show, coming up shortly, we have Al Farrar and Sean Clark, who some of you will be familiar with. But for now, uh, let's bring out Chris Hales. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a, a great day wherever you are on this wonderful little blue planet. And uh, we've got a very, very interesting show today, and it's really good to be here. Lovely. And welcome to Bob Wright, of course. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the show. Everyone in the chat room, glad to be here. Oh, and Alf and Sean, too. They are lurking. They're lurking. <laughs> They're lurking. <laughs> and Brian, how, have we got you? Uh, I think so. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, good. Hey, everybody. Lisa, Bob, Chris. Alf and Sean, uh, back in San Diego. I forgot to mention last night um, to thank everybody for their kind words uh, in regards to the uh, passing of my, my grandmother a few days ago. And I know there's a lot of people that are on, on the call that uh, sent me a Facebook message or an email. So I just want to send a shout out to everybody, including um, all you guys, for uh, for all of your, your love and support. So I'm back here in San Diego. I was on the road yesterday. I'm I'm back here, and I got my headphones plugged into my iPad because my headset died. So I'll do the best I can. <laughs> Sounds fine, Brian. Okay, no a couple problem. of just a couple of really quick announcements. Uh, hangovers from previous shows. Uh, Chris has got one brief one with in regards to the property that was mentioned in Southern New South Wales on the repurposing show. Indeed, yes. The the collective moves with incredible speed. Um, from that show, from meeting Joe Bragg and Vanessa Bragg, a a group of people has have sprung into action. Um, there was an event plan, well, not event, a, a visit planned from Trevor Osborne and Holly. We're going to meet up with uh, another group in Queensland, Scott Kennedy and Shree Martin, to look at a property there. Well, what it's turned into. On the weekend of the 17th and the 18th, actually probably beginning on the 16th, the way the itinerary is looking, there's actually going to be a gathering at Lake Conjola, New South Wales, for that whole weekend. It's an, in, in, an inclusive event for the One People, and it's the very first Opal meeting, the One People Ascended Living Communities concept. The details will be on... Let's put the preliminary details will be on the IUV website later today. There will be a PDF that has a description of, a description of uh, Joe and Vanessa's property. So download that and have a look at it and have a look through the itinerary. It's mainly a call, a shout out to the Australians, of course, because they're the ones most likely to be here. But, of course, anyone who wants to come internationally, come on down. So Lovely. look out. We'll, we'll give more details and probably have another a quick chat with Joe and Vanessa on Monday on the repurposing show. Okay. What else? Uh, yesterday, briefly, one of the callers came in, and called into the show, and talked about the Lakota Bank. Um, we're looking into that because apparently it may not be as it seems. So, just to let you know that there are people in the background doing some oh. some checking and double checking on that. Oh, who said oh? That was me. Oh. Me. Someone. Someone nearly had a just a little coffee incident. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, the disaster loomed for a moment there. So, all is well. All is well. Coffee is safe. Yeah. Good. Okay. Now, um, for those of you who aren't fam familiar with uh, Al Farrar and his material, uh, I came across Alf beginning of last year, thanks to Sean. 
who you'll also meet. And we did, well, what I thought, <laughs> and I'm sure he's laughing, I thought I was signing up for one of my usual two-hour interviews. But that didn't turn out to be the case. We spoke for three days straight. And nine hours of recorded material went up on the internet. And what's come from that for, for Alpha Row and Sean has been amazing. And I have to say that his his information puts a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together, for me at least. It takes the concepts of the new age as well as religion and puts them in, in puts them together in a way that fits. And a lot of the I know a lot of you who wouldn't have actually heard those interviews because, you know, nine hours is a lot to sit through. Uh, some of you may have only been introduced to Alpha Ra a couple of weeks ago when he had myself, Brian, Bob and Vera on his radio show. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a neighbour doing some construction work, so there's probably noise in the background. But that, those fundamental questions that a lot of us get started on, like who am I, uh, why am I here, what's my purpose, where am I going, what's after this, do I come back, they're, they're answered in a way by ALF that completely, oh, I don't want to overuse that word again, resonates, but there you go, gels with a lot of what Heather actually has come out with as well. When she talks about um, the history, and I, he, he may be surprised to hear this too, but there's a lot of points where they are uh, in agreement. Would you say that too, Bob? Yes. Um, yes, actually, now that I come to think about it, they do agree a lot. mm <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, there's, I don't even know how to get this conversation started, to be honest, because there's so many different areas we can go down. And one of the reasons we're having a talk to Alf today, one of many, is that he's just brought out his first book. And it, for me, I think it's an important one, because it's it's the basics. And it's one of the things about Alf's message is... It's unchanging, you know, because the, the foundations don't change. And if you have a solid foundation, wherever you go from there, you know, I think can only be a path of truth if you have a really honest, solid foundation. And that's what he gives. He gives the history of where we came from, of why this world was created, what its purpose is. Um, and that's a very important place to start. So we may as well jump right in, unless there's something else that uh, Bob, Brian, or Chris wanted to bring to the table before we bring Alf and Sean in. No, I'm good, thanks, Lisa. Let's bring okay. on the troublemakers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, stand back, everybody. <laughs> the troublemakers. There's okay. only one troublemaker in this group. <laughs> That's true. And, 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 it, it, and it, it isn't me. <laughs> and the name is Chris Hales. That's yeah, great. Right. I agree. Damn, Hi, Lisa. Brian. You made it. Hey, Hi. Brian. I'm sa I'm sorry about your loss in your family, buddy. Hey, I, I really appreciate am. that, Al. Thanks, man. I really she's am. On, she's in a better place. She's guiding things oh. from the other side. Yeah, we had a little discussion on the website um, about... By the way, this is Al Farrar talking, for those who don't <laughs> know. Hi, everyone. I love you all. But we had almost the exact same thing. We had one of our, our students lose a family member. And I gave him the spiritual perspective, okay, because this particular person, in the book we talk about the various incarnation choices the soul makes. And there's usually three. There is the normal path, which is incarnating with your soul group and everybody you've been with before. And that's what most of us always pick. Because it's the easiest way to grow, remove karma, and incur karma with those that you've done it with all the lifetimes. There's the slow road, which someone's take to ascension. Okay, but then there's the number one hard path, and this is the straight up path, the quick way to your ascension, and um, not a lot of us do it. And through our incarnations, we may have done it once, twice. I know some that have done it five times, 
It's where you pick the incarnation for the most growth, and it's a hard way to go. And this this woman took on an incarnation um, as a chronic diabetic from a little girl, had uh, lost kidneys, lost limbs, just a life of suffering and pain, but had brought everybody around her into this great state of love. This was a niece of our own Maureen. And uh, everyone was giving their condolences. And I know I didn't get well received on this from a lot of people. I said, condolences, condolences. My God, you should rejoice. Okay? How often can you see someone who takes on this kind of incarnation, a lifetime of pain? How often do you see someone that has come here that's been in a wheelchair since a little child? Okay? How often do you see somebody like Bob Wright? Okay? that has taken on the incarnation, go through what he's gone through, and then, well, we all know what's happening in Bob's case, but you don't see this that often, okay, the people that choose the hard path. So I said, let's rejoice. I mean, look at what this person has done for humanity, for society, and, um, but, wow, it was just so timely, because I saw Brian's post, and, but, uh, yeah, when you see something... Elf? that yes lisa harrison do you actually are touching on one of the points i wanted to touch on which oh, wow. is we must why be <laughs> <laughs> there's a phrase that you hear a lot which is if there is a god why is there so much darkness why is there so much pain and suffering you well know, this question okay let me just okay we'll answer that okay but beforehand um thank you I've been feeling a lot of Heather recently, so it's it's funny you brought that up, okay? Yes, I can feel there's a great teacher that's with you guys, and obviously that's Heather. And yeah, um, you guys have instilled in you the correct basics, okay? So yeah, I would agree that we should resonate, okay? Because the basics never change. The yeah. groundwork is set, okay? So yeah, for, to hear that, I've been feeling that like the last few weeks – Ever since, and it was after the conversation with Brian when he said, you know, our teacher, who, you know, doesn't like to remain, you know. Uh, oh, she was horrified. Go- she said she thought she, we were, you were calling her that anyway. Calling her head? No, no calling no, her, her teacher. Calling her teacher. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, Brian said she doesn't like to be called that, right, and likes to remain. And I said, well, but, but let me say, okay, whoever, whoever is, I won't name any names. Is doing one good job. Okay, let me just say that, and because uh, you guys are getting it, and and uh, yeah, <laughs> right. And there are so many teachers out there, and uh, you know, in the beginning, man, I used to say, well, they don't know this and that and this and that. Hey, you know what? There's so many understandings, and everybody has their own understanding, and we call it a spiritual pizza. And they read and they understand and they website and they this and that and they see Brian and they say Chris and they see Lisa and they say me, they see Sean, and they see the other ones, and we put it all together. It's like putting toppings on a pizza, and we love it, and we eat it. And I say, well, this is wrong, and that's wrong. Hey, you know what? Okay, I, I, I've given up on that. Okay? Whatever you want to learn and you want to study is right. Okay? That's fine. Go for it. But I just wanted to mention, Heather, we won't call her a teacher, but, hey, props. Props to you, Heather. You know, <laughs> as I always say, people say, why is this guy off ride any different? Okay, why is he different from any other teacher? My answer, look at my students. Okay, the students are the teacher. And I look at all of you guys, and I don't know all of you yet. There were more that I've missed, a few of your other people. But you look at the students. Okay, that's the validation for the teacher. And Heather, you got some great, we won't call them students. We'll call them, I don't know what. (laughs) <laughs> well, look, hey, hey, here's what it boils down to. You can call students or you can call teachers. You can, heck, Alf, Alf, you can call me whatever you want, man. I don't I care. I that all the time, Ryan. Oh. Here's the truth, <laughs> here's the truth <laughs> though, is that here's, what, here, here's what I, the way I look at it now. We're all students and teachers to each other. I mean, I, I learned more from Bob and Lisa and some of those people in Morocco, and I learned people from people that call in. I mean, we had some amazing callers that call in. But I think if you always accept the fact that you're going to be a student to some and a teacher for, for others, you're always going to have the door open to learn new things. And really what it boils down to is 
um, receive different ideas and perspectives and, and start looking at things through different lenses. In that case, we're all students and teachers to each That's other. I think we're kind of out, outgrowing the whole guru-disciple type of a relationship. At least I am at this point. Well, that was, I agree with you completely, don't I? 100%. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's something I always say on the website. You know, I get a, a ton, and so, Sean does also, of personal emails with personal questions. People that are not yet confident enough to post on the website or ask. We have a core group, and then we have a couple thousand lurkers, as I call them. People in the background, you know, like those on the Lisa Harrison shows. But <laughs> I, I, I used to answer all these questions on the website for the last year and a half, and Sean too. And then I saw... Wow, these are the same questions that the core group are asking. Okay? And I said, start, these are such good questions. I don't want to answer them just for you. Start posting them on the website. Because, as Brian just said, we all learn from each other. Somebody else's question is someone else's situation, is it not? Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And Elf, yeah. one, of, one, Elf, one of the things about a, a good martial arts school is that you have. The students, as they come into it, realize that one of the roles of a student as they pass through is to be a teacher to those who are more recently arrived than they are. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's this passing of information down the line, and if it's well done, it's extremely efficient, provided you don't get people drifting off, you know, adding their own bits to the information. Purity of information is the problem there. Okay. But the, the guy who's leading this group, the person who's leading this group, the moment that that person decides that they know everything, they're done. They're no longer of use to the group, okay? The guy that I train from, he's been doing it over 40 years. He still looks for people who can teach him stuff, always, because he has to keep progressing too, or all uh, everything around them stagnates. Right. I agree so, with you 1,000%, Chris, mm. and I not only do I expect it, it happens and I demand it, those when we get new people come in, okay? Yeah, I it's a matter get... of it's a matter of that person staying open to to being taught by the the newbie that's just walked in the door. Exactly, and that's what I love about our students. Somebody new comes in, and all of them teach the new person. And then, like you say, if something needs to be corrected, I'll correct it, but I'll exactly. let them go, okay? But yeah, we have that type of group on the website, and yeah, we all learn from the new people. Because they're asking questions that, that you haven't thought of. Right, exactly. Bingo. Exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. good, Chris Hales. You know, it's kind of like this. It's almost like this. It's like um, if, if, if somebody walks into a room and they put an apple on the table and they ask a person, what is that? And they say, well, it's an apple. And they say, okay, what else? Well, it's a red apple. All right, what else? Well, it's a red apple. It's about three inches off the table. And what else? Well, it's a red apple. It's about three inches off the table, and it's shiny. Because what happens is our beliefs or our perceptions, they gain in um, awareness, and, and they, they, you start to realize that everything that you look at is multidimensional. And when you have the ability to start looking at things and gaining, g- gathering thought and detail, it almost changes the very thing that, that which you're looking at. And they say, I think I've mentioned it on the show before, they say uh, when the student is ready the teacher appears and how true right. that is and how how many times can we re- remember in our situations circumstances in our life where that was the case and I think that where some of us may have gotten caught up is the idea of okay the student is ready the teacher needs to be a person it, it doesn't necessarily it can be an event a trauma an adversity uh, a circumstance a story it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a person there's some of our greatest teachers in life have been the experiences that we've gone through. And in that case, yeah, the student never graduates. Um, Brian, they might, a... might graduate. Ron, they you're, you're in fear of becoming guru, Brian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> now, there was a thing I posted on Facebook Hardly. a few months ago, Brian, that said, what did it say? Um, to those who pay attention, everything is their teacher. Absolutely. And exactly. I mean, just I like a tree that. standing there can be your teacher. You know yep, I mean? that nails it. So, yeah. We just suddenly got a lot of echo on the line, though. We sure did. Shoot, that might be me and my iPad. Let me mute out and see what happens. Not me, because muting me didn't help. No, and it's not Brian either. Maybe it's me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, it was Bob. <laughs> it was Bob. <laughs> Dang it, Bob. Bob, you're guilty. It's good, man. <laughs> yeah, well, let me address something real quick before we go back to Lisa's question, what Brian said about adversity, Okay. 
adversity, darkness, okay, whatever you want to call it, it, negativity, and overcoming that is how we all grow. It's how the basic system works. But it is the only way an individual acquires truth. Okay? What do you really know, Lisa? What do you really know for sure? The only thing you really know is what you have experienced okay, through the five senses, right? Okay, that's the only thing you know in this lifetime for sure is what you've overcome, what you've tasted, touched, smelt, heard, and seen. Okay, that's it. Okay, that is your truth. Okay, and it's made everything that you are up to this moment is what you have experienced. Anything other than that has to come through your sixth sense or heart center, okay, your soul. Um, and a little of it or a lot of it, depending on who and where you are and what you've overcome, must be believed there must be faith of some kind but everything we are has come through experience in overcoming adversity in this lifetime but why don't we go back to your original question before we add out over the entire two-hour show and miss everything yes please go ahead why is there pain and suffering sean clark it's right up your alley buddy oh, yeah throw it to me um, no, but what's great about that question is it's going to lead into the, another one that is that we wanted to cover tonight that's perfect, um, which is the ego and, and what it is, why we have it, all of that. But, um, yeah, you're going to throw that at me, huh? Why do we have evil? That's your question. You answer that all the hey. time to people. Hey, I know you know the answer to that one, Sean. I just read it in Alf's book no, no more than 48 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I've read and that your book. book. That's I had to read that thing about 30 times <laughs> in the editing process, so I could probably quote it out. Why do we have evil? Um, evil, darkness, we prefer to call it darkness because evil, uh, darkness just encompasses the whole thing better. Um, darkness, well, we say evil is that which allows good to grow. In other words, darkness is what allows and encourages, right? Encourages light, allows light to shine. Okay. Now, physically, that's true. You can see that. Okay. Without darkness, you wouldn't see the stars, for instance. But this world operates, the universe operates. Okay. But especially this world on polarities. We have to have left and right, up and down, male and female, good and bad, light and dark. Okay. It's it's like it's like a single electrical system that's driven by a battery with two polarities, a positive and a negative. And that positive and negative, they're opposites individually, but they drive a single system with a single purpose. And it's the same thing here, just like male and female. Why do we have male and female? I mean, we need both together to, to, to well, that's going to get confusing, but... Um, you can't have any movement. You can't have any. Um, you can't cause anything to happen. For instance, the wind that blows. Okay, it only blows because there's a high pressure area and a low pressure area. Okay, it's blowing in order to equalize those two, in order to to balance everything out. And like uh, Al says, Sean, can I just ask some clarification on a couple of things? Mm -hmm. Firstly, you say this world. So clarify what you mean by that, because I'm pretty sure you mean more than just this planet. Yeah, by this world we mean the the 3D physical and the 4D astral. Okay. That's actually this world. That's what we call this world. Because and the other thing is, Alf says that this world is the only one that operates like this, that create by creating light from darkness. Only one of its kind. So, just out of curiosity, what's the process in other worlds? Do you know? Yeah, sure. Of course I do. Okay. Of course you do. <laughs> okay. You're getting us. You're getting us all out of order here, though, Lisa. Okay. <laughs> well, that'd be but, a control. F just go with the flow. Um, we got plenty of time. We have. We what? Well, you got three hours? Oh, we can go to the archive, but we know it shuts off at two hours and fifty-nine minutes, Bob. We learned that with Rebecca's show and Lisa's show. Okay, let's talk about this world then. This world was created approximately four billion years ago. Okay. But I said one, okay, by the way, I'm counting. Sean, you said four, and Brian, you said two, whether you know it or not. So for oh. those of you who love my okays, I am counting everybody's okays. 
when I have to wing it, there comes an okay now and then. Well, and, I'm sure and I we've apologize. Got, I'm sure we've got you knows and ums and who knows what else we're saying. But Sean's going to lead with hey, four. Brian's got two, and I had one. <laughs> what was created four billion years ago and was created for a reason. It was created to extend the creator, prime creator, whatever you want to call it, whatever you name it. Some people even call it grandfather. It was created to grow ourselves. Okay, those of us that came down 40 billion years ago, you can call us angels, Elohim, which also means gods, which is another name for it. I am presences, creator gods, whatever you want to call it. This world was created to grow the creator through growing its parts, ourselves. By placing ourselves into form. What is caused, these are teachings I get directly from God, from Michael, from Lucifer, from the creator himself. What is caused in the flesh has its effect in the spirit. The creator has a system for growth. By placing spirit into form, it grows larger. Now, this is a 3D and 4D world. Spirit does not grow not being in matter. We started in rocks, in worms, and all kinds of little creatures till we got up to cavemen, monkey man. We've heard all this on the Lisa shows. Uh, but the most growth came when we could put ourselves into a conscious form. It originally started with the pre-hominids and so-called thinking um, pre-human types. The more you could put yourself into form, it's called fragmentation. We're all souls down here, and we're cut from our higher self. Angel, I am presence, Elohim, creator God, whatever you want to call it. We're a soul, which is a fragment of a spirit. There's only one spirit down here under the firmament, which is the wall that was placed around this entire world, oh, approximately 8,000 years ago, with our first new creation, our first human Adam. Okay, and this wall, it goes way out there. Sirius, the Pleiades, Orion, all these star systems are under the wall. The entire 12 constellations are under the wall. But this world grows by placing a fragment of the spirit above your spirit, your angel, into form. This is a soul. Souls come from spirits. In other realms that are not 3D... There is no growth of this kind because there is only one polarity. From 5D up to 9D, there is one polarity, light. There is no darkness. There is no anchor of the dark, as Lucifer does for us. There is one polarity, and there is no physical form as we know it, a 3D physical form in what, 4D, 5D, 6, 7, 8, 9D. All operate. There's only one color up there, too, technically light. Everybody's white. Everybody operates in a light body. Okay, up there, I could kick Brian in the nuts, and Brian would just smile at me. <laughs> Down he here. Can't, he can't appreciate that right now. He just dropped off right. the line. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I could kick Sean in the nuts, and he would just smile. <laughs> Down here, that's not the case. Right? So we grow the spirit above through the flesh. When you progress to 5D, and again, I try to stay away from this and do not teach my students this and do not talk about ETs and other worlds. Although I have a part because it isn't important. You have a purpose here you came to do and came to achieve. So let's focus on this. But okay, Alf, Alf, slow down. Done, let me just end it real quick. End it real quick. A lot of stuff already. Let me end it real quick. This okay. is the only world where we grow spirit through the flesh. Well, there's something that you said earlier, Alf, which I agree with very much so. Uh, and that is that the only thing that you know is what you've experienced. Exactly. And experience is a relational thing. It's You experience something in relation to something you're not experiencing. You can't experience hmm. being tall in the absence of short people. Exactly. That's excellent, Bob. That goes back to Sean's statement about you, polarities. Yeah, you can't, right. for instance, learn something. Without ignorance, right? right? If you if you were omniscient, literally omniscient, there would be zero to learn. You couldn't ever even have the experience of learning. Right. right? But, um, 
but with now that we have the polarity, we can have the experience, and then we can have then we can know. And knowing something is so 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 much different than believing or thinking oh, something. Of Just because you believe something is true doesn't make it so. So, in a sense, when, when, when the reason why we're here is to know ourselves. Alf, one of the definitions I've heard of the word believe is that it was an old German word that actually means I wish it were so. I love that. So we have to be very, very careful about what we choose to believe. That's cool. Mm. So Cliff High, that, comes from, that comes from Cliff High, by the way, as an attribution. Okay. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing that this world has and is the key to everything and what very few people teach is darkness, okay? And that's what I teach, okay? Darkness. And darkness and everything that comes with it is actually the beginnings of matter being created, okay? And everything darkness is bad and it's evil and I'm the light and I'm a light warrior and I'm such a good guy. But let me read you something out of one of my favorite books, okay? And I read all the esoteric stuff, okay? And, oh, there's an okay. And this is one of my favorite absolute passages, right? And it is YHVH, which is Michael to become. YHVH means, it's not Yahweh, okay? It's not I am. It's a contraction in Hebrew, which means to be or to become, right? Archangel Michael became Christ, Lord Michael. But this is one of the things he says that's the most... There's so many great things in the Bible. But this says, and I want you to listen to it, and I drill it through my student's head. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Riches stored in secret places. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Riches stored in secret places. And the biggest thing is people are not taught this side of the story. Nobody teaches it. Nobody understood it. I've lived it for billions of years. And it is the key. Darkness is the catalyst, the fertilizer that allows light to grow. And I've only seen one article, one person, I guess, that agreed with me. And it was this article Sean found, I don't know, three years ago. For those of you that have seen it, I saw somebody mention it to somebody on Facebook about a month ago called The Hidden Hand. Mm. Remember that article, Sean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's on yeah. my website it's been there for years. Yeah, we mentioned well, it in the first interviews. Sean opened a little post when we used to post on Amazon about it, and it said almost the same thing. I said, this guy is for real. Okay, This guy is for real. Darkness is the catalyst. Out of darkness comes light. Well, it's the only of- thing that makes sense. It's the only thing that explains why there is pain and suffering on this planet is because through that, we create light, we create growth, we create... Because it's necessary. It's as simple as that, yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's... it's you, In order to have order, right, first we need chaos. We have this in the book in one paragraph. First you need chaos, and then we make order from it, right? First you make mistakes, then you learn from them. Um, first you have darkness, then light comes to it. Um, first you incur karma, then you clear it. You know, I mean, whatever way you want to look, there, there's a million ways that it happens, but um, that's I, that's the system. That's how it works. The best, oh, yeah, the the best uh, gardens uh, grow out of shit. Yeah. What? Say it again. <laughs> I said the best gardens grow out of shit. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sure they do. Well, yeah, and look a, at a nice look, visceral, visceral. Look at a farmer's field, right? He grows food, grows crops. But what he grows it out of is dirt, right, or shit or whatever you want to call it. But it's dirty, okay? And that there is absolutely nothing wrong with that dirt as long as it stays in the field. It's good. We love it. I mean, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. The only time it's a problem is if you track it onto your white living room carpet, right? I mean, you keep it there. You, we keep it in this world. We keep the evil in, contained in this world. And And – here is where it does its job, and you, it's just not allowed to be tracked back into the celestial we realm. We all well. came here for one big reason, to experience evil. Even Bashar says that. You know, I don't listen to other people. I don't study with other people, so not to contaminate my wisdom. I know where it comes from. But um, somebody sent me a Bashar video, oh, about two years ago. Right, in fact, right after I started with Lisa. 
And I looked at it, and it was in the first five minutes, we are Bashar jumping around here to experience evil. And I said, whoa, let me clap. Awesome. Now, goodbye. See you later, Bashar. You're done. Um, I'll let the ET stuff go. But that's why we all care. came here. There is no evil in 5D through 9D. There is not the opposite polarity. Right? We're all lovey-dovey. And when you get Does there, that mean there's also that... no growth? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Well, they no grow polarity, through no us. Growth, well, no growth. Well, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things I, I used to always say. Because my parents used to drill into me about, you know, living in paradise and everything perfect. And I would tell them that perfection is stagnant. Exactly. You know, Alf that, would even say it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it if is. You can imagine, Believe me, people. Yeah, if you can imagine a musician sitting with their instrument and doing nothing, there you've got it. Well, I mean, if, if you're perfect, awesome. where, where do you go from there? Well, that's just it. But understand, let me give you our purpose and start talking about some of the great things in the book. Okay? If a couple of people, I mean, my, our people that are in the web or the chat room, they haven't posted it. What, did, what did you come here for? Why did we come here? To create, and this is directly from God, people, to create yourselves above through the flesh below. We're all creator gods to be. We're creating ourselves spiritually through the flesh body. This is what we came here for. This is what we incarnate and reincarnate for, to create ourselves above through the flesh below. And there's standing room only upstairs just waiting to get in. But it isn't happening because nobody wants to get out. I've been <laughs> brief periods in 5D. Alpha Rao lives in 5D. Believe me, I can't wait to get back in the flesh. It is boring. But what you've been building since your very first incarnation. Now, we all have the 3D body, the flesh body. But you're not the body. You are the soul. The soul has a body. Okay? You are not the house. You are the occupant of the house. You're not the car. You're the driver of the car. This is what you have to understand. Okay? You have a 3D body. You also have a 4D body, which is your astral body, your soul body. And you have an electric, electromagnetic body, which is your ego body, that we have to begin to talk about. But you came here from above. We all come from at least 5D, some from 70, some from 80. Some people claim to come from 90, whatever. But we all came here from higher realms to create ourselves above through the flesh below. The only place to grow the spirit is through the flesh body in 3D. And it's a little seed placed in leaf, into form that will grow incarnation after incarnation, growing in light, bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But you are actually creating a mixture, it's called. A mixture that you're building of dark and light, dark and light in every incarnation, and this is the matter or spiritual material not only does the creator use to extend all universes, but this is what you take with you when you leave the 5D, when you're done. And it's an automatic system that guarantees that even if you do nothing, even if you're an atheist, even if you are the most ignorant person and non-spiritual in the world, you will succeed. Sooner or later, you will become. We're all here to become. But you take with you what you have created and built. All of this matter and spiritual material goes with you to start your own world. And it started with your very, very first incarnation. And this Actually, is that, that resonates a bit with um, what George Cavasilis says. Good, my good old friend George, okay. Good old friend George, yeah. He says something along those lines as well. Well, then he's correct. No, there's things I agree with with George. Um, Sean used to tell me things, you know, the structure of the universe, Christ, then Michael and Lucifer, even though Christ is Michael, Archangel Michael is the right hand, Lucifer is the left hand. I agree with the structure of the universe. And if George says that, then George is right. But we are creating, what are we here creating? We're creating ourselves above, through the flesh below. This is what you're here to do. You can't build it anywhere else. You need to be informed. Now, there's, we talked this on Lisa, there's the new planet. And a new program, and I don't even get into that, okay, but we've talked about it. If you want to go back to the Lisa shows, you can listen to that. Oh, let me just say, okay, because I haven't said one for a while. Thank you. 
You're going to get it out of your system. The was created to grow us, us the soul, to grow our spirit or creator God above, whatever you want to name it, through the flesh below. And you grow it in 3D. And it's stored in 4D. And when you're done, it goes to 5D. And you take everything with you that you have been growing if you make it all the way through. Most I just want to do. make a comment, Alf. As to the to the audience because you talk so fast and you <coughs> have a lot of information. Brian Kelly, Brian and... Kelly is almost as fast as me. <laughs> well, it's up until now I've only been able to refer people to the nine hours of interview that we did, and it's you know it's not easy. But so if you're finding what I'm saying hard to keep up with, um, that's why I'm really glad you brought this book out because you can you can read it and reread it and reread it and uh, yeah, without having to go and sit through nine hours of OKs. Yeah, well, the book lays yeah. everything out nice and logically from start to finish. You know what I mean? And you, and yeah, you can stop and go back and reread things. So, but actually, I want to make a comment. No, my favorite show with you. I mean, there's a ton of information in the first three Lisa shows, and it seems everybody we get in the core group of students comes from that show. Those shows. Um, but I feel. That the countdown show on December 19th. Remember when you did the countdown series last year? And I was on the show on December 19th. And I'm not sure if it was Bob or Chris, but I think it was Bob who actually got me to ask questions. Because I usually only ask questions when I'm taught. But he had said, it's one of you two, which one? Fess up. I think it was Bob. He I said, a show it. before, I snuck in and listened to a show, and I think it was the one with uh, the Simeon Connection. Mm-hmm. Or one of them, Bob said, you know, no, no, he was arguing with somebody or arguing with, maybe it was my favorite E.T. guy or one yeah, of them. Yeah, it was Tolek. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, this world is an organized system. It isn't just all chaos. And Nat started it, and I answered and addressed that question in the Countdown show, and that question led to most of the understandings in the back half of our book. So I want to really, I didn't get a chance to thank Bob, but Bob was right. Okay, This world is organized and has a system. It's not all chaos. Th- that is my last name, by the way. Bob or chaos? Right. right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Bob is right. Yes, wow. Woo, over my head. I missed it. <laughs> but that led to the whole finishing up of our book. Uh, laying the system out. And it is a step by step by step. A leads to B, leads to C, leads to D, leads to E. And the basics never change. Lisa's dear friend and mine, Mel V, said something to me, which I took as a great, great honor. Um, and she said, you know, Alf, one thing I, when she reviewed our book, one thing I love about you and really appreciate is your teachings never evolve. The basics are the basics, and everything can go back to that. And seriously, if you can listen to our videos, audios, there's 50 of them, I don't know, 60 of them, and every little piece connects. A goes to B to C down to piece 1,000. It all fits, and it all pretty much makes sense. I'm saying believe me that I'm right. That's your decision. Well. That's the whole difference with you compared – that's the whole reason I'm working with you, at least from my point of view, Um, and why most of the students are here with us, because everybody out there seems to miss something. You know, I don't – again, I can name names, you know, George and all these different people. No no names. But every everybody out there, they have some of them have amazing information. But then there's something that you're like, well, wait a minute, this doesn't add up, or wait a minute, that doesn't add up, or yeah. And, well, guys, and it's not supposed to be easy to find all the answers. You know, oh, we true, have to, true, true. We have to sift that information and find the little nuggets, as Scott Bartle says, because the picture is built up from those nuggets, and it's a bit different for everybody. But if we're all served it up in one book, for instance, which you know, it just doesn't Positive. happen. Uh, you, you know, we, 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 it would just be a supermarket. We'd just go and get the book and go through the cash register and go. Well, without, you know. without giving a name in this case, let me give a, a very specific example. There's a spiritual teacher out there who has publicly said that he has an experience of what he calls the quote-unquote ultimate truth, right? And then he has an experience of some past lives, Okay. 
He's publicly said that he can't reconcile those two, that he doesn't know how past lives fit into a universe that's oneness or one being or one consciousness. Don't get me going on the oneness group. <laughs> and so that's what I've found out there is that everybody – so in other words, what that teacher does is he teaches the oneness because that's what he understands – and he also tells people about these past life experiences, but he admits to not knowing how to put them together. He doesn't understand how a single universe could have past lives. You know, what's it, it doesn't make sense to him. Why not? And it so, makes sense to me. Well, it no makes sense to – well, yeah, but he, he then has to break up the oneness in order to talk about the past lives. You see what I'm saying? Well, no? not if they're all yeah, happening at the same time. Yeah. yeah, well, see, he's, no. see, he's, no. he's just operating on a smaller, uh, a smaller picture, and and he can't uh, expand that perspective, and that's just what he's that he's stuck in his development at that point. It goes well, back everybody to everybody you know, But what what most of the students say, and let me make it simple for you, okay? Not that I'm teaching them things they didn't know, although there are a lot that wow, I didn't know that, or wow, I didn't know that. But what they've all said is, I had a lot of the pieces, Alf. But you've given me the ones that helped me to put it together and connect the dots to understand. Right. It's this like we have a puzzle. We're trying to put the puzzle together, but we're missing a piece, or we just don't. And, like, Alf came along and said, wait a minute, just twist that a little bit, put that there. And I was like, holy crap, it all fit together all of a sudden. I mean, that yeah, was makes the difference. Sense. Yeah, it all, all of a sudden, all the other stuff I had been learning, some of which conflicted. You know, because you learn some things – it's like the whole oneness and past lives things. It sort of conflicts. It's like, wait a minute. Um, how do I put it together if it conflicts? And all of a sudden, sometimes all you need is that linchpin or that one extra piece, and the whole picture just falls into place, and you're like, wow, wait a minute. Why didn't I see that before? So that's kind of been the difference with Al. But isn't that, isn't that why a lot of people struggle is because – you know, something that they learn doesn't necessarily match up with something that they've been taught before. So all of a sudden they start to doubt any new information because they've got, got grown some um, attachment to believing it to be an old way, right, even right. if that's not the way. I mean, that's kind of what cognitive, life is all about. Cognitive, cognitive dissonance. dissonance. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You look at that's, that's what it, yeah. that's, that's what attachments lead to most of the time. If you're... And if you're attached to a particular view, a particular belief in in a certain piece of information, and something else pops up that completely contradicts us, you know that's why people get stuck in cognitive dissonance. And that's why you have to have to maintain a an objective of of always being flexible enough to move along with the information let, as it presents. Let me read something. Okay. Let me read something. A paragraph from the preface, real quick. This was something that uh, Mel V liked for some reason. I've made it a point in my journey to not only look far and wide for my answers as well as within, but to keep everything everything on the table as I do so. Did so. In other words, I rejected nothing along the way. I simply kept adding new types of information to my evidence. But here's the part that speaks to what you're saying right now. I also made it a regular practice to occasionally reject everything and see what came back to me in order to discover what I really knew and what I couldn't deny. That's a critical part. You can't just add pieces of information. You have to also reject it sometimes and yeah. ask yourself, wait a minute, do I really know that or am I just believing it because someone else said it? You well, the beauty, the beauty about yeah. that is my, when I read that, by the way, in the book, it was like ding, 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 ding. I was automatically intrigued by what I was going to read mm -hmm. to come in the actual content of the book because you, you, that's a good way to not only approach reading that book but to approach Everything. Everything. Mm, right. Yeah. 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 Continually. Yeah. Continually. Across I mean, you board. have to. Yeah. You have to realize that you never. Ha you never just have it. I mean, your mind is always playing tricks on you. Yeah. You know, See, a great example, Lisa. When you when you left for Morocco, you that first little blog you wrote, you 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 were saying, you know, almost like, I'm not really sure why I'm going here. I'm not really sure what it all means. You weren't just you know flocking to flocking to Morocco because it's. You know, somewhere you really wanted to go. You were, you were still <laughs> no, questioning what, what's question. happening. Yeah, you you were still questioning what's happening here. What's really going on here? And that's I mean that's one of the reasons why your interviews have always been so good, frankly, because you're always asking those questions. Mm. Well, speaking of questions, I have a bunch. Actually, can I throw throw one in? I've got a, just one yeah. thing based on what Bob said that that 
I just wanted to put out there because I'll forget about it. Bob, you're talking about chaos. Now, if 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 chaos is a physical expression of darkness, which I think is a really neat thing to throw into this into this conversation, then if we look at the role of our partners in contrast, they've got this saying that everybody reviles from chaos order. Okay, they think that the, and the way that the way that we've been programmed to deal with that statement is a fear response. Oh my God, they want to control us. But if you take a look from the perspective of the hidden hand, are they not saying from chaos we will learn? And who are you sure. Doesn't that, I'm just, no, it's a general statement. Does that not put the role of our partners in contrast into a more, into a more, if you want to call it that, positive perspective? Well, because yeah, whole that's essentially what we're, we're here to do. Well, exactly. It's the whole thing in the book. You create the darkness. Okay, nobody is responsible for the outcome of this incarnation but you. You can't blame anybody else. There's nobody. You, through your ego, create the chaos that you, the soul, brings order to. That's how you grow. You create – who creates Bob? Who creates the chaos in your life other than you? No one. You do. You do. You do. Okay, and you give it to every relationship you have, all in your soul group, and they give it back to you. You create the darkness that you bring light to balance. You create the chaos that you bring order to. This is how it works. It is the bedrock system of creating light or spirit above what is caused in the flesh has its effect in the spirit. This is a cause and effect world. It's an automatic system where the creator just sits back and laughs as you supply him the material. You don't even know what you do from the lowest of souls in the lowest of vibrations who do the hardest work, by the way. Okay, You create the material that the creator extends universes and the worlds of worlds and everything with. You're all builders. It's amazing how this world works. It's incredible. We That's in one of the other aspects of, of your teachings that I really liked was that there really are no victims and there was no wiggle room for that. No. None. <laughs> None whatsoever. No wiggle room. There is not. If you listen to all our teachings, there is no wiggle room. And this is one thing I say, do say about any teacher, not a specific teacher. The basics are the basics. Part one has to be correct. Part two, part three, one leads to two, leads to three, leads to four, leads to five, leads to six, leads to 100, leads to step 155. If one of the basics is wrong, then everything behind it is wrong. It has to be. It can't be any other way. And, and when and you, look at, the whole, what's so when you look at the whole picture, Alf, it's a wonderful expression of love. Oh, the yeah. Fact, the fact that we would all come here and provide the contrast, provide the experience for each other. Because we're all relating to each other in different ways. And we're not always playing the, the good guy. We also play the bad role. We've all done shit. Oh, hell, oh, hell yeah. Excuse me. Heck yeah. You know? <laughs> we've all done oh, shit. Oh, heck yeah. But we That's didn't why make we're failed. mistakes. You know, you could say, you could look back, you know, and, and I look back at my life and I look at some of the things that I've done, you know, and for a long time I felt regret and guilt, and but then I began to realize yep. that everybody is in the perfect experience for themselves. You that chose they, it. They, they chose, they wouldn't be in that space with me if they hadn't created that experience for themselves. Not as an excuse for what I've done, because I've learned from what I've done, <clears throat> but it was the perfect experience also for me, for me to learn that. Of course it was. And let me ask you one question, the same question I asked Lisa back in the first shows. Have you grown the most from your mistakes or from doing it the right way? Where have you grown the most, Bob? Always from the mistakes, yep. Always. See it, people. See it. It verifies out of darkness comes light. Hey, my victories, I haven't grown much. I felt good about myself. Wow, I did this and I did that. But I've learned the most in my defeats okay, through my mistakes. Okay, That's where we learn. Yeah, there's, <laughs> we a, say, there's a good side to the bad that we we just fight against. We don't want to see it. 
because uh, we don't like because it's painful, but but it's there. <laughs> you know. So. Alf, the, I've got a per, it's sort of a personal question, but it's on behalf of all the women listening. It's all good. You say that right here, right now, the female form is the form yes. of choice. Yes. And that does tie in with a lot of the, you know, the resurgence of the feminine and a lot of the New Age talk and about that. That's got nothing to do with all that. Forget that, love the feminine and crap, this and that. Let me just get right down to it. It's tell very me why. Funny. Let me tell you why. And it's very funny, and I don't know who said it on the website. Oh, it was our dear Musy. Okay, Musy, name is Nancy, your muse. She had gotten with us on Lisa and then got off when I wouldn't give her all the answers she wanted. Nope, you got to earn them a piece at a time. That's how I teach. Until you understand B, you don't go to C. But then she came back with us, and she says, you know something, Alf? Hey, when you said that the feminine is the highest form, i got to tell you something. No, 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 I disagree with you. Dude, we're oppressed. Okay? We have PMS. We have our monthly this. We go through all of this hardship and all of this pain and all of this stuff being a female. Would you agree with me with that that's it's harder being a woman? Would you agree with that? Yes. I Why do you think all the big strong souls choose a feminine body? Because it is the hard path. The harder it is, the more you grow. Not only yelling. That, you're yelling. You don't have to well, yell. I'm getting excited about this. Because you know, all I need to hear is is some religious Christian. Oh, the feminine. All the angels were male. I said, you are a fool, buddy. Okay, you are a fool. All the angels are male. Okay, the feminine form. A, it is the hardest path, but it also the feminine form. If you were to compare vibrations and measure, okay, the feminine form and the masculine form, and look at a sine wave, you will see the feminine form vibrates faster which means it can take more light okay the difference in incarnating there's a scale one through nine and you get the master numbers 11 22 and 33 what is the difference sean i'll let you answer this between an 11 a mini master vibration and a nine what is the difference well one carries more light the 11 carries more light the 11 is also yeah exactly well, that's it the difference is light the ability to transmute darkness by carrying more light the feminine form allows, through the adversity, you to grow more light. It's the same as the harder the incarnation, the more light you grow. What, what about the ones who are in between? Okay. Well, what, do you, okay. I love talking about that. I talk about that every day. Be specific what you want to say, Bob. Well, there's a, there's a lot of androgynous... Um, you want to talk about what society labels as gay, right? Well, not not just not gay. Just that. Not mm. just gay, but people transgender. Who, transgender. People transgender. Who don't well, yeah, same thing. Don't yes. necessarily identify with one sex. Yes, and let me explain why this and how this happens. Okay, and it's a biggie, and nothing pisses me off more than when people start, and I'm sure you too, Bob. Okay, with what you've gone through. People start talking about homosexuals and this and that, and the Bible says, no, no, no. Okay, let me explain it to you. We have on our website, okay, not everybody knows, but Alf knows because I feel vibration. We have, I'd say the majority of the students are, I wouldn't want to use the term gay, but most of the females right now have and know and will admit to that they know that they have a male form or male entity inside them. They know that. When you have, the more you incarnate, the more you cross incarnate. Because you've been everything aside from black, white, green. You've been male, you've been female. And especially with the females right now, okay, as I've said, all the heavy hitters, all the most powerful of souls are in female forms. And I talk to them all day long and get emails from everywhere and all first things women will come out with is i know i'm male inside okay and it's from cross and and the same with some of the males i know i've been feminine for most of my incarnations and the ego imprints this okay and it does cause confusion in how it's dealt with in everyday life okay everyday life not life 
but it's through cross incarnation. I've incarnated 884 times. This is the 884th incarnation that I have had. And I know just about every lifetime. And it's with me, it's about 50-50. But I feel, I have to question myself, because I picture myself as a big, strong male, but there are times I feel very feminine um, and catch myself feeling that. And this is a bit, I've never admitted anything like that. I'm not saying I'm homosexual. No. Okay, I'm celibate, abstinent, nothing anymore. But before that, I was heterosexual. But I've caught myself had it, having feminine feelings. And it's, it's difficult to reconcile because when society labels it as bad, you're a gay, you're a this, you're a that, you're a this, that, it's through cross incarnation. And the longer you've incarnated, the more you have these feelings. And it's from being predominantly male or being predominantly female. Ideally, it should balance, but it always doesn't. Remembering that the soul, and it's in the book, chooses the incarnation. You're also choosing the gender by choosing the incarnation. Okay. But on our website, most of the older souls, when you get up to 7 on through, 7, 8, 9, 11, 22, 33, most of those have incarnated so many times that it's confusing. But I can say without a doubt that most of the females – that are on our website in that study religiously will tell you, I feel masculine inside. Okay? It's from cross incarnating so many different lifetimes, Lisa, that this comes into being. Well, and it doesn't always come through with a gender issue. It, it just nope. comes through. For instance, they may feel masculine. It doesn't mean they don't feel f like a woman. Also, they just feel stronger or they feel more aggressive. Something. You know what I mean? It can come through in other ways, but. Right, and it doesn't yeah. mean that they prefer women. Right, so we right, have right. A, we have a lot that do, okay? The ego still thinks it's male and wants, prefers a woman, yet they're in a feminine body. We have for a lot of this, and I've been seeing – go ahead. Uh, just going to say, for, ma for males, it would be empathic males. Very much so. That, that, that's a, that's a, I can see that immediately. You, you, I hadn't thought so. about that before, but I can see where that comes from. Mm -hmm. Very much so. We have uh, a young man. He doesn't mind me talking to him because he's come out of the closet on our website. He's a 33, one of the highest vibrations on the planet. And um, when I felt him, I knew that he had the feminine side of him. He knew. And I encouraged him to just forget about it, okay, and be it. And uh, his name is Alaniel, and he is a super high vibration, very knowledgeable. But he's openly now gay. And he talks about it openly, doesn't deny it, and his life has changed. Okay? Everybody has grabbed this little – and he's only 18 years old. Everybody has grabbed and adored this, this little boy. Okay, And, um, yeah, it's amazing. And he, a lot like you, Bob, he is raised in a very Baptist family, not Jehovah's Witness, but his dad's a pastor. And he also is into to witchcraft, both white and black, okay? And so he says, my God, if my parents only knew, I'm gay and I'm a witch. And we crack up. But, but, but he has, and he understands what has happened. He has been the feminine incarnation. He's had many, many incarnations, way up there in the hundreds. He knows and he prefers, and he goes with what he feels inside. I'm not going to suppress it. I am this. Yeah. Go on, Bob. Do you want to say something? No, 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 no. Did, did we lose Alf? No, no, no he's there. He's oh, there. Yeah. He's I'm, there. I'm just shutting up so other people can speak, you know? <laughs> Good day, um, just giving, I'm just giving out your website, which is alpharad.com. Or raisetheplanet.com is easier to remember. Raisetheplanet.com. Okay. Yeah. So we, also, we also now have the title of the book, .com. The, it's called the keys to ascension com. actually goes to the same place, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, yeah. And it's A double L F A sorry A double L F double A R double A. Yes, ma'am. Right. Just checking. Dot com. And um you've got another book coming out too, which is all about walk ins, right? Yes, ma'am. When's that due to come out? Well, we're hoping Within 90 days, we've got the material written, and those of you who don't know, we talked about it on the show when we had Lisa, Bob, Brian, and Vera. The Walk-In was our first book, and we basically channeled all the information for it. We do it live in the radio shows. We had 50, 60 people call in and ask their best walk-in questions, 
and we answered them. And we had all the material, I mean, tons and tons of information, you know, 10 hours of live radio, maybe maybe 11, and we start writing the walk-in book. That was going to be the first book. And then it stopped. And I'm going, well, wait a minute. We have, this is a perfect book. We've got all, we've got the stories. We've got the testimonials. We've got more information than anyone else ever could possibly think. And there's very little out there on walk-ins. Considering yeah. I've counseled close to 10,000 walk-ins and participated both in the, the heavenly realms and the earthly realms. And it stopped. And the answer was, why are we stopping this? Nope, we're going to write this book first. Okay. I said, well, but this book's almost done. Oh, we're in the editing process. We're putting it all together, cutting and pasting. And we all know why that happened, which I discussed in the show when we had you and Bob on. There was a new creation coming, a different type of walk-in, something that would be amazing. And I said, okay, we'll put it aside. And I've been teaching that something's happening, and bang, here comes Lisa and the gang, kind of like cool and the gang, Lisa and the gang, and then Rebecca Jernigan after it, and it gave us the end of the book that it, wouldn't, it would have been ridiculous to write the walk-in book based on the old system when all of a sudden there was a new system out there. So the walk-in book, we have all the pieces. We've completed it. We're going to do one next show with Rebecca Jernigan where she actually she's coming on next week to tell us because she, I don't know if you heard the information, she actually stopped the process yes, and did I did. not want to continue. Well, she's coming on. She, she has made a decision as to what she was going to do whether it was stay or go, transform or die, her words. And she's coming on next week to finalize that. And then I'm going to do one wrap-up show, and we'll have the walk-in book done hopefully in three months. Okay. Now, hopefully in three months. We also, okay, and I didn't want to say it. I won't mention any names, but, you know, our first book, everything came together. Again, we had myself and Sean and God, and God provides. That wasn't... I thought it wasn't enough. Yeah, right. Okay. We got help from a world-renowned author. Okay, that's in our group. We also got a great editor that edits and does layouts. That was in our group. My last we, we didn't Ashara. even discover. We didn't even discover what she did. Didn't she didn't tell it. us anything for like most of the year what? until about two months before the book was done. And she goes, "Oh, by the way, I edit and put books." books together as a job and i'm like are you kidding me you didn't tell us this months ago <laughs> and we were losing our mind we had we had ankara okay who is a world-renowned author herself helping sean and then all of a sudden we got the piece that we didn't have we didn't even know she was there yet she'd been in our radio shows with us hmm. and then we still had to where are we going to come up with the money because we wanted to print a bunch of books to have them in hand and boom we got a Wait. donation and don't forget the cover artist Oh, yeah, of course. He's a fantastic oh, yeah. artist. He's done videos well, for us. Done, he does yes. our artwork for our radio shows. He did the cover for the book. I mean, he... And is this the same guy that did the cover art or the art for the radio yes, shows? Yes, that yes, on? yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Every show that everybody's still raving about that. Everybody still talks about it. You know, the black lady in the turban, right, with the eight on her head, right? I said, <laughs> oh, you mean Lisa? Oh, yeah. All three, all oh, yeah. three of them. Like me. No problem. All three of them found us from the, that first show. And we just didn't find out till later what they could do. Same thing with uh, Lee and Fee for transcribing. Yeah, they all, yeah, Lee and Fee for transcribing. We couldn't do it no. because, again, the way I talk, we can put 50,000 words in one show. So somebody had to transcribe it. Lee and Fee from England. Debs and Fee, you sent them to us. They all came from Lisa, the first Lisa shows. Yeah. But then we got the donation to do it. We didn't know where we were going to get the money. We didn't have it. Well, anyways, last week we got another donation from the same person, not near as large, but large enough to do everything we need to do to print books, to put it on Amazon, to get it done. This one, what we're doing, we might do this one a little different. We self-published the last book. Not that we didn't think we get, could get published. We, we thought we could. But, you know, the process from start to finish could be a year. Listen, everybody say no, submit it, submit it, submit it. We wanted to get the information out now because now is the time. Earth is the place. We're here. Now, with this book, while we have the 120 days of editing and putting it together, we have all the info, we're going to submit it. Now, you need to take two chapters and submit it to different publishers. We're going to do that. But if it isn't accepted by the time we have this done, boom, we're going to self-publish again to get it out there. 
Okay. So yeah, by self-publishing, we got the information out there for our first book, but it's been a hard road to hoe. Okay. Because we don't have a publisher, we don't have a um, what do you call it? A publicist. Okay. We're not doing a speaking tour that they've all set up for us, and um, so it gets more and more difficult. We're doing it the hard way. We're doing it the hard way. Now, Alf, so, before we get too far into this, I want to make sure I, I get a couple of questions out because yep, they've been something. burning. They've been I burning. I get really excited. <laughs> I don't mean if I, I'm yelling. I just get so impassioned and excited. So well, people, maybe move the microphone away from the mouth a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just passionate. Sounds now, good on my end. <laughs> so so what are the... One of the things you say that I've never heard before is the way you talk about the ego. And you say that the ego is not your own, that the ego is, it comes from the earth. It's it's earth consciousness. Yes. That it is, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but that essentially you are your own soulmate because you are, there are, you have two souls. You have one that comes from the celestial, your angel, your whatever way you want to put that. And the other one comes from the earth consciousness. Or it's a, you could call it a fractal of the earth consciousness. And we call that, that particular soul the ego. Now, you say that it goes back to the earth once you leave the body. Is that true? No. Where does, where does that ego consciousness go? Let us Be- first... Yeah, go ahead. Well, hey, Alf, 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 Alf. Don't, say, don't. Now you're, now you're quiet. Don't, don't put your mic away like that. <laughs> not that, that far. Okay. Um, Go ahead. You, you said that it's the ego, the ego soul that contains all of your memories of this lifetime and every lifetime, right? Okay. Understand that you are a binary soul. You have two souls. You have the soul, which is a fragment. Some people use fractal. I know that's. I heard that word first from Brian Kelly. You're a fragment from your angel, I am presence, whatever you want to label it, above in the celestial realm. It is connected to your heart center. It is the mind of God. Your mind is not your own. It is also a soul. And it is fragmented from the earth consciousness. You can call that Gaia. You can call it Lucifer. Okay? There are two souls. The ego soul that acts as your mind. You're not you. You think through a larger being. Every consciousness that is here in this world on the earth, be it animal or human, or anything that thinks, consciousness comes from the same place. So you are growing both light and darkness through the flesh body. You think through a larger being, and we call it the ego. Now, Eckhart Tolle, I'm sure many of you have read it, should have he sold 11 million books, did some great work on the ego. But the greatest thing he said in his book is he identified the, the ego as a collective consciousness, which it is. It's a giant collective, which is Gaia. We call it Lucifer. And everybody has a mind, and it's not yours. It's almost like you could say it's like a computer screen attached to a big old gigantic computer. And you think through it, and it is the veil of you. It's a veil that blocks your past lives. It's the veil that keeps us playing the game of God. And that game is creating yourself above through the flesh below. So you actually have two souls. Both are necessary to enter 5D. The two become one. What do the two souls become? One spirit. Christ talks about this in the Gospel of Thomas. When you have made the male female and the female male, the soul is female, by the way, the ego is male. The ego is active. The soul is passive. The ego generates the darkness that the soul brings the light into balance. Upon physical death of the body, both ego and soul, or soul and soul, go into the astral where it's stored as you. But no, the ego does not go back. Return to the earth. 
Okay, but remember, this entire world is Gaia, Lucifer, whatever you want to call it, both 3D and 4D, everything under the wall, the rakia in Hebrew, which means wall. Okay, so it goes into the astral. Okay, it also is your works. It's what you're building. Okay, the ego creates the matter, darkness. Okay, darkness is matter waiting to become. Matter is energy or spirit waiting to transform. Spirit is matter that has been transformed. You are the transformers. Science agrees with me. My favorite guy, what's his name, Sean, with the long hair, the Japanese guy? Oh, Ke- Keiko or whatever, the, the guy. Whatever. I've heard, Keiko? Him, <laughs> I've heard him say it. I've heard other scientists say it too. Matter is energy waiting to transform. Okay. All of this is created transformed by you. This is what you do, every one of us. But to answer the question, no. The ego is also spirit and goes with your soul together into the astral realm. It's in the book. You could say we you know, give that, matter that, consciousness too, right? There, there's actually that brought up. There's a part in uh, David Wilcox's source, source field investigations where he uh, he shows a bunch of studies where science has proven the whole collective consciousness thing by by um, uh, note, noting inventions that major inventions that have have occurred throughout history that one person usually oh. gets credit for it, but simultaneously, usually, yeah. Yeah, it's usually created, it's usually pulled from the ethers by four or five people that are all working on the same exact thing, the light bulb, the telephone, whatever, all around the world. And uh, that's that just goes to um, further illustrate the whole collective imagination, collective consciousness thing. That's no, like, there is no original thought. It's all it all comes from the same one source. Rupert Sheldrake has some work on that too. You know, where you like it's that whole hundredth monkey thing or whatever, where where monkeys or some any animal, there's different ones, parrots on one side of the planet will learn something. And all of a sudden, the ones on the other side of the planet that have had no contact with those now know how to do that. Yep. Like, I mean, it, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Yep. There's a lot of science that proves that now, for sure. Yeah. But, There's, Alf, you, you missed that the ego retains the memories, too, the incarnation memories. And And there's probably people out there going... I just have a soul. I don't have an ego. It isn't. I'm not two. I'm one. Ask yourself why is it that when you, if if a person meditates, okay, and their their mind, they come out of their mind. That's an experience of the soul. Okay, there's no memories. It's a it's a pure consciousness state. A pure I am presence is is actually what those people even call it a lot of times. Um. But if you hypnotize someone, you take them uh, into their mind, okay, something that you can force where you can't force meditation. You're actually, you actually have to back away from doing anything when you meditate. But through back. hypnosis, through hypnosis, you can force, well, basically, force the retrieval of past life memories. And that's the ego that you're going into. Notice that you go in. Notice that the past life memories are in the mind. You go in through the mind, where a meditation type experience is is exactly. not in the mind. It's through the heart center, through the yeah, soul. All, re- all regression work, they're regressing egos. You're regressing your earth conscious and your past lives. Right. Well, you I got a question. The soul. I got a well, question. If, go ahead. Go ahead, Al. My question, I, I haven't finished your book, by the way, so maybe you cover this in the book, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of spiritual teachers, for lack of a better word, out there that talk about you know this this shift of the ages this kind of end times that we're in right now as being one of the signposts is that we're we're coming up on the whole wheel of karma is coming to an end does that mean that ultimately this what this new age this golden age represents is is everybody being freed from the wheel of having to uh die and reincarnate what's your take on that Okay, well, first of all, we don't die. We're a soul. Excuse we me. become. We become a spirit. So rebirth the flesh and body dies. But yeah. now let's go back to you, you said one of the most important things. Okay, all these teachers teaching, okay? You know, and, and <laughs> how do I say it? What do you think or who do you know that might be the proof of all this? I think I know a few people. Do you? 
<laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was a tough one. You, Lisa, Brian, Bob, Vera, and all the others, and Rebecca, are the proof of what these people have been talking about. Okay, The karmic system, dude, it is the bed. Oh, I'm yelling, sorry. You get me excited and passionate. It is the bedrock. Okay, cause and effect. The karmic system is the bedrock for incarnation on this planet. It can't end until those who are here are no longer subject to it to grow. And who do I know that is no longer subject that hasn't gone through the karmic wheel? I've gone through the karmic wheel. Clark is a walk-in, and in this lifetime, he will finish the karmic wheel. Everybody 11 and above has achieved 5D ascension through the karmic wheel. But for the karmic wheel to end, there had to be a way to end it. Because you grow karma, free will, incarnation. This is the title of our book. You incarnate to incur karma. You reincarnate to clear karma. Free will determines the amount that you're going to measure to yourself. Nobody else creates your karma but you. You create it. You overcome it. You are the God of you. But for it to end, how would it come to an end? The creator would have to end it because he implemented it. And he has done this by increasing both sides, ego and soul, to the level of 5D. In other words, he has bypassed his own system by either selecting individuals. And by the way, this this new creation is going to go to all humanity. That was a straight message from Michael, Lord of this world. Okay, above all humanity. But you are the evidence of it. You're the only evidence of it. You people. So far. <laughs> so far. Well, no, we know there are more. We know there are more. And hopefully our walking book is going to reach them. Okay? We know there are a lot of people that what's happened to them, they don't know what's happened to them, Lisa. They don't know. They know some terrific change and something spiritual has really happened to them. And they know it's like something never before, but they haven't come in contact with, you know, somebody like Lisa who has a voice, has a radio show, or me that can tell them what happened. Okay? So, yes, the karmic wheel, you are the proof that it's ending. Now, how long would this take to get into everybody? I'm not sure yet, but it's happening. And I've been told by, like Rebecca said, with agrees with my information from God, there is a window Okay. Did you ever get anything like that? Any of you guys? 40 days and 40 nights. That's how long it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was, was told, Brian? What was the question? I was told three more months, okay? And I've heard that from a couple of people, right? Where did, you, did you get anything like that? Whether it be from... Uh, Maybe it was work days. That's what he meant. 40 work days. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be about three months. <laughs> yeah. Is Labor Day included in there? I don't know. Christians want it. 77s. I'm sure you've heard this in Daniel, um, Bob. 77. Okay, that's 490 days. Let me do this. I said, no, no, no. A seven is a period of time okay, that the Hebrews experienced. Seven good years, seven bad years. A seven is seven years. So it was actually 490 years, not 490 days. Um, but did you get anything like that, Lisa, about this, this, this opening, this window or anything like that? I never asked you that. Well, I have had from a couple of different sources uh, talk about this mass influx of walk-ins that is happening right now on a variety of levels. And yeah, well, I've been talking about that for a couple of years, so that don't count. That's not new. That's no, old. I mean, I mean just over the last three months. Oh well, yeah, um, yeah, big time. Yeah, big the whole new window of, has opened up. Big time. So there's been a lot of talk about it. Yeah. Exactly. But Alf, just another question on, on how this is being ended. Um, one of the concepts that's kicking around is that the, the souls that originally began this experiment are incarnated, incarnated now here to help end it. You know, like Lisa, okay. for instance. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Did I get enough okays out there? Yep, the yes. quota is met. Am ample. Oh, I got one more for you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> 
all of, and of course I am one of them, in case you don't know, I mean, I think everybody does, all of us that came here four billion years ago, okay, all from the beginning, including, right, the 12 archangels and the 72 other archangels, which were the gods of the nations, as much as can be of them put into a flesh body, are here. Every... We're all in, baby doll. Did we lose him? Meaning, as oh, much wait, as... Wait, say, put, say no, it again. You got back. cut off for a second. Mm. Okay. We're all in. Did you hear the part about the 12 archangels and the 72 other archangels? Yeah, yeah, we got that. Archangels? We just lost you for like all two seconds. Guys. The way it's been wow. put to us, Alf, is by those who who it was done, so shall it be undone. As it was bound, so shall it be unbound. Is another way of putting it. Yep. That's only, that's... only, only, and understand this. Okay, you have to understand this. When the time ends, and it can be found in the esoteric works, not even Michael, not even the Christ, this world, no one knows the time but the Creator. Okay, understand that. Okay, it's all about the Creator. He can undo it, and He can do it, but He does and undoes it with the pieces. That what He built it with is that what He'll unbuild it with. Okay, but I tell you this. Okay, and it has to come this way, and it can't come any other way. The Deliverer will come out of Zion. That is the Kingdom of Heaven. We all exist. This is called. There's a name for this. The kingdom of heaven. Everything under the wall. This is Lucifer's kingdom. Okay. Gaia, call it what you want. Everything above the wall is the kingdom of God, ruled and fragmented from Christ. Okay. The deliverer will come out of Zion. Okay. And all fragments of the. Everybody here is a fragment of the 144,000. You have to understand that. Every single one here except those before Christ. There's a lot of us old ones still in form, and those back into form. But there is another Christ coming, okay? And it was funny that maybe there's others of you that are attached to an archangel, but none of you mentioned his name, okay? The archangel Michael is the right hand of God. Archangel Lucifer is the left hand. Lord Michael Christ Michael is the Christ at the top of the cross, and at the bottom... At the footstool is Lord Lucifer, God of this world. But there is one great archangel who has taken over since Michael became the right hand. Okay, and in Hebrew it's Netzach, which means victory, but his name is Hanael, the victory of God. Hanael will bring, and I've not even told my students this. Maybe vaguely, there is the deliverer, the one who all of us. Okay, so now I need to ask you a question before I completely lose my mind. Go ahead. <laughs> You're going to stop him in the middle of that? I am. Okay. I am. <laughs> the, the, tree of life, the tree of life. The, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the tree okay. of life. That's right. Is Hanael in Netzach. Netzach. the position? Yes. Which position? It's, well, if I can picture the tree. I knew you were going to ask that. I <laughs> know. Oh, well, yeah, every archangel is on all ten of the archangels are on the tree. You know, Michael is the center of the sun, Tiferet. Where's Hanael? What? Where's Hanael? Hanael? Is where you see Netzach. Okay, I'm not looking at a picture of it, okay? And I gave up Kabbalah a long time ago. But on the tree of life, Michael's at the center, Tiferet, okay? Where you see Netzach, if you can look at a picture of it, they have all the names in Hebrew, right? Netzach means victory. That's Hanael. Okay, our whole, you have Kether and Malkut. Crown to kingdom. Malkuth is kingdom. Kether is crown. Our whole journey is from the top to the bottom of the tree. You understand that? From crown to kingdom. In case you're dropping Kabbalah on me. This is something we should ask in advance, and I'd be glad to explain it to you. I'm sorry, what? Netzach. (laughs) Okay. All right. Okay, so of course you guys all understand what she's talking about, and I have no clue, okay? All right, well, Tell you what I'm talking about. There was when we were in the desert, and we did the, we did some energy work in the desert, basically. And we had Bob lying in the centre, and we all just randomly sat down around him, and created a circle. 
what occurred to somebody who wasn't there but is a very switched on woman, friend of ours, is when she saw the drawing of us in our positions, she tree equated it to the tree of life. With Michael being in the middle. Or Bob being in the middle. Bob being in the middle. Bob actually which taking is Michael. Up. Yeah, which yes. is Michael, which is Tiffere. Yeah. Duh. I'll give you a guess where I was. On the right hand side? <laughs> that's Netza's position. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was going. I wow. to... Why didn't you tell me this before and on the radio? Well, you'd never mentioned Hanael before. Well, no, you guys didn't. Okay, I have not even told my students this. I briefly mentioned Hanael about six months ago, and I've let it go until the time, and the time is now. Hanael, Netzach, victory. Hanael is the deliverer, the new Mashiach, okay, who will bring us out in him. Yeah, it's, I keep stuff close to my vest, Lisa. You know that. that, right? that I have, no, no, that that wasn't an accident. That you you mentioned that name. Alfara has big secrets that I don't even tell the students. Lisa is really good at dragging stuff out of me, and it gets me angry. <laughs> Hanael, the victory of God, and he has taken over for Michael since Michael ascended. And he that's is. Not, that's not the same as Gabriel, huh? No, not even. Gever okay. Eel means God is my strength. God is my might. Okay, Uriel, God is my strength. Gabriel is actually in Hebrew, Gever Eel. God is my might, or the mm-hmm. might of God. Not the strength of God. A lot of people want to misinterpret it, but I speak good Hebrew. And, you know, if you're an angel, you got to speak Hebrew. We all speak it in Aramaic. But Hanael. Can I say badass on your show? Well, I just did. You can say whatever you want. Hanael <laughs> is. Take it back. The greatest yeah, of the back. great, the baddest of the bad, never. And a lot of people don't know Hanael. You will come to know Hanael. Okay, his color is the crimson red, and nothing, nothing, no ETs, no anyone can stand against Hanael, the victory of God. So big time, big time, big time. And of course, my students are going to be mad because how come they have told us about? I said I briefly did. I guess I'm going to have to start talking about Hanael. Hanael is the deliverer that will come out of the kingdom of heaven, which is here. And he is the head. Okay, by the way, now of all the 12 archangels, everyone serves Hanael. Okay? He's like Christ's lieutenant. And he is the leader of the host. Hanael. Netzach. And you are in the Netzach position. My, 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 my. Can you go back to Brian's <laughs> question, though, a little bit? I don't even Hang know on. what it was. I ADD'd out on it. What was right, it? Yes, you did. <laughs> Brian, you want to repeat it in terms of like how this experiment is coming to an end, what does it look like from... <clears throat> oh, okay, well, yeah, we're, if, 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 and I hardly ever use if because I believe that if my mother had balls, she'd be my father. So I do not use if. Sean likes the if word. <laughs> but wow. I can't say if, I cannot say if, because you are the proof that it is not only possible, but it has been done. So I would want to say, if this has been done, then we can get off the karmic wheel, or some of us can, or most of us can. But again, the way the Creator works, and I know because I've been with Him for four billion years, that if He can do it once, or when He has done it once, then He can do it twice, and then He can do ten times. So if He can create one, He can create many. And you are the ones I know, and Rebecca. And we all know but what difference others. does that make? What, how, what, what are you talking about? What difference? You have the been end escalated. Result. The end result is the karmic wheel is null and void. If we can increase both the ego and soul, which grow through darkness by bringing light to match, this is how you grow spiritually speaking, by overcoming darkness, by balancing your karma. If we can increase both sides, both ego and soul, both are necessary to make a spirit. Spirit has two halves, okay, ego and soul. If we can increase both sides, like what has happened to you, without having you go through nine cycles, okay, which could be 40, 50, 70 lifetimes, to balance karma and grow, if you can grow it without having to grow yourself, then we've eliminated the need for the karmic wheel. Lisa, what if, what if, uh, Lisa, Brian, and Bob, what if everybody had the experiences that you guys had in Morocco? What if the whole planet had that individually? I hope they do. 
they what would. if they did? What, what if they did? Would that make any difference? Well, Lisa was just asking, what, what difference does it make? Would that make a difference if that happened? Yeah. Well, I mean, what difference does it make in the larger spiritual picture in terms of if this world was created with a specific protocol of creating light through darkness well, and everybody doesn't have to go and create light through darkness anymore, what is the... But well, but every here, project well, every well, project has an end well, point. Where, 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 where is Lisa getting to this world yeah, yeah, that is here, no longer necessary? Exactly. Well, here's yeah. here's what here's what it boils down to. Well, yeah, we had that conversation, Lisa, and then you and I had that private conversation. You don't want to put me on the spot with that one. I ain't going there. <laughs> Hang on, Brian's got something to say. What, what well, I think what I think what you're asking is what everybody wants. What everybody's been asking for all these years that have been following. Consciousness and evolution and ascension is what does life look like on the other side? And I don't think anybody has the answer to that question. I, I think that um, well, it's beyond. I, I think it's beyond. No, no but I, I think have, it's beyond the scope of prediction. Well, no, it's not a prediction. I give you the answers because I, I live on the other side too. You live on the other side also. There is the Brian Kelly above that fragmented you that lives on the other side. You're veiled to that because of the ego, so you perform like a nice little slave, like we <clears> all do. Yeah, I realize well, what that, I'm but saying, my, my point is this. My point well, is what this. What I'm saying is, is, who can tell you that, that you will believe? I can tell you about 5D experience, but how do you know it's true? How do you know I'm just not some other guy? No, I'm him? talking about 3D. What's on the other side of... They're the, saying, the what's 3D? on the other side of the date? Like, whenever... The one thing no one knows, and Alf will tell you he doesn't know, is when this stuff will will happen. I've already told you that. Not even Christ, not even Michael, not even Lucifer, not even any ET, not even any God, not even anything. They're asking, All do we creative. know, do you know what, and I don't know if you even want to say it, but do you know Forget when, what, what will it look like? In other words, are we all going to stay here and be happy, clappy, right? Or are we all going to die and go into 5D? Or That's hey, what they're wait, asking. Wait, What's wait, it no, look but like? That's oh, okay. Part of what so why don't we that's just, only part of what we're asking. Just, because right now, aren't we go? Are we? Here's, here's my question: Are we or are we not going through something, an experience that's totally and completely unprecedented? Unprecedented. Uh, yes, unprecedented. unprecedented. Mer- the merging, the the bringing of heaven to earth, and the merging of the two. I mean, talking about what life is like in 5D is at this point is one thing, but talking about okay. the merging. Slow down for a second. Is something else. Okay. I couldn't even hear the question because all our energies are up over this one. And we're affecting the Skype, okay? Because Ryan's getting excited now, and I'm excited, and Lisa's excited, and Bob is that calm level Bob all the way through. It's not him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm yelling at my computer because I don't know where the microphone is, so I don't know where I have to talk into. Okay. Head, so. It's working. <laughs> Your, the energy came up so high that it just went into garbly gawk. Can you pull yourself in a little bit? I know you're excited like me. High energy people. I love Brian. And ask the question again because I only heard three words of it. What I was what I was getting at is that um, this experience, this uh, this great transitioning that's been prophesized by all all of the ancient civilizations for thousands of years, this uh, shift of the ages, this merging of heaven to earth, heaven and earth that the Bible talks about. How can we talk about what it's going to be like when it's completely unprecedented? There's no point of reference as anything that any realm or dimension has ever experienced before because on this level, on this scale, it has yet to be done. Excellent. Okay. But we can talk about it. We can talk about what's going to happen. Okay. Heaven and earth, and that is our purpose, to bring everything we talk about in the book. To bring hey, everything. Excuse me, but apparently we've lost our broadcast. Has anyone what? Press no. any buttons? That's rare for blog talk. Can you guys completely. in the audience? Can you no, they, in the chat room? Can you hear us? They said it's got. They got sound. Yeah, sometimes it's only certain people lose it. Okay, they got it in the chat room. We got it back now. Okay, great. Okay. Thank okay, you. Now, <laughs> this stuff again. You have to understand something, and this happens a lot with highly, what I call highly sensitive information. Okay. And I can give you the answer to most anything. If I can, I'll tell you I can't. But there's not much that I can't because of where it comes from. But I had something happen on the website the other day where I posted something about this and some of the transformations. And, boy, I got my little ass spanked big time. I had to delete the post, and I had to ask every one of my students to delete the post before the energy changed around. And that's never happened. And we weren't happy about it. In all my <laughs> lifetime, that's never happened. 
and I still don't know exactly what was in the post okay, that I could not share. I've never been allowed not to share what I know, but I know what I can't share. Okay. Well, let me tell you this, Brian. Okay, understand what the purpose is. And uh, somebody who'd been on Lisa, Chris Thomas, okay, said the same thing. And I love that when some people can get that. Not that they agree with me, but they agree with God. The purpose is to bring all above into all below. All the spirit into all the matter. When you do that, you're done. You then go on to the next phase, which is 5D up. Okay, And you, you don't stop creating when you're in 5D, Lisa. It's not over. Okay, But there, you're creating light and taking the light from below and extending you might it. You might sounds boring. It is boring. The 5D, the 5D projects it? itself back down into 3D and 4D. Exactly. Here or somewhere else. It's always recreating through through 3D and 4D. Upper, below, it's just like the poor people right. right? feed the rich people. It's the same system. We're the workers. The workers do the work. We're the creators. Okay? We do the work down here. Okay? Up there reaps the benefits. So, But when you're there, you are a tree. And you will have seeds in form. You will have Lisa Harrison's, Brian Kelly's, and Alfaraz's, and Bob Rice's, and Sean's okay. working their little butts off, working your little butts off to pay the price. And you reap the benefits. That's the glory of being God the Creator. Not only do you get all of the memories, okay, but you get all of the material being created. And that's, that's hey, I think, I think that's oh, the key God. right there, Lisa. We've had this discussion before. Is when we make this transition, we make, we make this shift, now we have the ability to experience multiple dimensions, have those experiences, yes. and yes. whatever we yes. want to experience, yes. we have, yes. the, we have yes. the choice. Yes. And now the growth comes from the um, being able to operate with that experience with a higher degree of awareness and a higher degree of knowing. Well, that, has, that You become the tree that has seeds, and the seeds grow, and as they grow, they supply you. Okay. You have the different experience from being the tree. We're all here becoming. We have not yet became. Okay, that's where we'll get into the whole we are not yet one. You are not yet one. If you're down here, you're part of your, you will become one. Okay? Even the oneness freaks teach moksha, which is becoming one with God. That's what they teach. The whole thing, if you go into the gurus and Hindus in the, in the Eastern, in India, Pakistan and all that, it's moksha, it's becoming one with God. So if you're becoming one with God, you're not yet one, right? But you're on your way. I mean, look out at the universe. Can you imagine how long it takes? Right now, your world is your body, right? I mean, you've got, what, a trillion cells or something and all kinds of little organisms. Someday, your world will literally be a planet and a solar system. And and then eventually – A star with Yeah, a star with planets. Eventually, it will be a whole galaxy. You know what I mean? It it just goes on and on and on and on and on. I mean, how long would it take you to be an entire universe? Here's the thing, too, though. One of the things we're discounting is this this world is a world that's based on perceptions. And – I have to assume that the multiple millions and trillions of various perceptions that people are constantly having in every moment, Mm -hmm. um, those still exist on other realms. So in 5D, very like just go using this as an example. 5D might be more boring to someone, but for for 10 billion trillion other souls, it's an adventure. You know, so each realm is what you ultimately bring to it, how you perceive it, what you make of it. So you can't really talk about experience being um, all-inclusive. Let me give you some facts. As an angel, I am presence, Elohim, whatever you want to call it, your physical body, Brian, is a star. Okay. You have a light body and you have a physical body. Your physical body is a star. Okay. There is the star that you are. Okay. We don't have time to get into the whole process. We've talked about it. But understand this. Your I am presence, divine self, angel, has a physical body in 5D, and it is a star. Alf, is that the, the, the ascension path that we on this planet are on? Sounds like it includes our body. Sounds like we're going to end up you know, one of the terms that's been used is physical angels. Now, okay. does that align, align with uh, where you know where you think we're going? Well, it just depends what you mean by which body. 
the if you three mean flesh body? The, the, the three D the three D flesh body, yeah. No. Lisa and I have had this discussion. And let me just Alf's say answer this. is no. <laughs> and I, I don't want to know that. To the Anybody, team. let me just tell you this, okay? And I have to tell you this, and you may think I'm arrogant. You may think I'm this. You may think I'm that. Okay? I don't give a shit. Fact, your physical 3D body is going nowhere but back into the earth. Okay? The 3D body was created and given to you, and you extend it, and you enlighten it, and you change its DNA to do one thing, carry more light. But it is a 3D body. You already have a 4D body. That is the soul's body. Okay, that is your astral body. You could also say, and you, when you say light, you, it, to carry more of yourself. Yes, more of yourself. Mm-hmm. But you've been building the 5D body, which is the fifth density body that vibrates at 5D. We all that are here vibrate at 3D and 4D. But we've been building the light body, the 5D body, made out of light, since our very first incarnation. This is what we build, okay? And it gets lighter and lighter and lighter through the material, creating the first fifth density body. Your ticket to 5D is matching 5D vibration. Your Alf, body I'm body about to throw a complete spanner in your works. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I'm about to throw a complete spanner in the works. You think so? Um, yeah, I know because I, I know this is going to be a fundamental um, separation from what you're by saying. By the way, people. By the way, people. The book is really great. Please buy it. If you don't like it, we'll even give you your money back. Okay. I know we haven't been talking much about the book, but it's a great book. It is a good book, and I and that's why you're here because I want to I want to I want I people to take the it. opportunity to. I love you have your, you have a style, and not everybody can can no, get with it, and I get that. But no, in written can. form, they have a better opportunity to take in the information without taking everything yeah, else with yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Written. Now, hang on. I want to say something, and I know you're probably going to scream at me, so move the microphone away. I never um, screamed at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the road that I've been on over the last six months. Yes, ma'am. The personal experiences I've had, because as you say, you only know what you've personally experienced. That's it. Tells me that the separation between dimensions is collapsing. Okay. And I know that what you say and what you teach doesn't go doesn't go down that road. Sure, it does. Yeah. Of course, it does. Yeah, it's not that it doesn't. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not to the extent I'm seeing it happening. Okay, well, tell us how you're seeing it happening. And let me tell you if you're correct or incorrect. Go ahead. <laughs> so the, the question is, what does it mean for the dimensions to collapse, probably? <laughs> well, of course it's collapsing. Right. I started, not that it's not collapsing. Wait, it's just, what does it mean? That's exactly what I started with you in the first Lisa shows. 5D is collapsing on 4D, collapsing on 3D. Of course it is. That is the problem that needed to be solved. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay, we're seeing a lot of... Okay, go, Bob. No, you want to say something. Yeah, I disagree. With what? <laughs> that it's a problem? Uh, yeah, I agree that it's... I disagree that it's a problem. Well, the problem is the solution. The problem... Well, it depends, well, I, it depends I, I, whose eyes you're looking through, Bob. Are you looking through humanity's eyes hold on, or the creator's hold on, I wanna, eyes? I want to hear what Bob is, is seeing as the problem. Yeah, so do I. Go ahead. I, I don't see the collapsing of the dimensions as a problem. I see it as the ultimate solution. Well, for the creator, yes. Yes. Yeah, but even for but us. For humanity. Even but for, for humanity, human- no. Why? But for humanity, no. Because I, I, I those, those who aren't ready for it will lose if it happens too soon. But that's what right? this whole... Walk in thing is about exactly, yeah. That's so what I've been saying for so, years. But it, 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 so what you're saying, it has no relevance because humanity oh, is being upgraded. No, hmm, no, yes, God is being upgraded, humanity, we are humanity. I don't make a separation between the two, okay. Well, your flesh body, Bob, will go nowhere 
where it cannot function. That's part of this. That's part of the collapse, though. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm listening. If I'm just, okay, if three, four, five, up to six, whatever, whatever, whatever right? if there's if the veil or the the wall or whatever you want to call it that right. separates them, right, is removed or comes down, yes, whatever, yeah, disappears, right, then those the three, the four, the five bodies of our uh, dimensional bodies of ours that we've been building right mer- merge what if they merge and what if we in fact draw down or whatever term is appropriate the fourth the astral body that we have right in, into the the third density and the the fifth angel oh, what is, what is it at fifth Fifth density, yeah, and all, the body. Body. all the way so up, or just a little higher. Okay. What if they're actually being drawn down into the third density? What if we can? I mean, look at what's happening to people. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying that fifth density is being drawn down instead of third density being drawn up? Yes. So there is no ascension. Everything yeah, is coming down to S. Heaven and well, earth converging on Earth on our planet. It's your definition of ascension. I doesn't uh, to me. Creation is constantly expanding and evolving. Oh, so to, oh, yeah, never stops. Never stops. The idea of ascension in the traditional sort of New Age speak is that we're going to go back to where we came. We're going to go back the way we came, and that sounds counterintuitive and counterproductive to me. Mm, it needs, why would we leave? Yeah, if this why, why is, and leave, I just believe. Why it, would we leave where? I'm, I'm missing that. Why would we leave where? If third density, if 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 being. Um, Third density is the kind of the pinnacle of creation's ability to manifest light or create light. Why would it be abandoned? It doesn't make any sense. No, I agree with you, unless there's a better system. And the, to me, the better system is to expand upon that. You don't chuck it out and come up with a whole new plan. You expand on the one you've, you've got that's working. No, I, I, I agree. Well, it will, in that situation, doesn't it? Doesn't it? All of a sudden, there there, there is no winners and there is no losers. It's just, everybody's back to a level level playing field. There's no more hierarchy of d- dimensions that are above other dimensions looking down and going ha ha ha. You know, we're 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 a higher vibration than you. It all is okay. just back so. To absolute. What would happen? Do you feel if everything came down? Would it still be three D or would it be three point seven five D? Or it would be 4.75D. We wouldn't be those, we wouldn't be living it like, we wouldn't like use that. Okay. Terms anymore. Okay. Well, now here's, turn, where, here's where I disagree. Here's where I disagree with you. We're talking realms, and there's also densities. Would you agree with that? 5D is fifth density. To exist in 5D, one or anything would have to be fifth density vibration. Uh, and in a 3D world, how could any creation that is 3D exist in 4D without being fourth density or but, exist in 5D? Okay, well, how do you explain the things that people see and hear and feel that are not third density, but they can see them with their third density eyes and they can hear them with their third density ears? For example... Tell me what they're seeing and hearing. Okay. I, um, I see into the astral all the time. Doesn't mean you're seeing it with your physical eyes. <laughs> right, exactly. No, you're I can Perceiving well, it. Yeah, I'm perceiving it. Okay. I've seen the difference. I, see I, know, I can auras, tell the difference between... I see auras and energy. Does that mean I'm this in fifth density? This is, no. Can I... You know what? Maybe, maybe I can help. <laughs> Go, Guru. Okay. Perfection is perfection, and that which is perfection is perfect. And what is perfect I like that, is, stand, <laughs> is, is, is unchanging. That which perfection is perfect. Yeah, that I which gotcha. is perfect is perfect. And that which is perfect is unchanging because it is perfect. And that which is unchanging is not optimal for growth because that which is unchanging is stagnant. So we escape perfection in order to come down here to experience the imperfection. Well, exactly. 
in order yeah, so that we can become something that we weren't, something more than perfect. We became something optimal, and you cannot quantify that which is yet to become because it is a new experience. Well, yeah, you're by, becoming by what moving, you will become. Yes, but what we're, we're, we're talking about a transformation of everything and all that is. A transformation that cannot be quantified or qualified until it has become. Okay. I disagree. There, okay. From the creator's perspective, okay, he is all there is, and everything is him. Creator and creation are one. Okay. And mm -hmm. what is created with, he uses his own material. It's all about God. There is no you in it. Okay. There is no individuality. Okay, everything is the creator, and the creator is everything, and everything that exists exists within him, and he creates or she creates from within himself. That's the only material that he creates out of. It has nothing with to do with individual human human consciousness. Three D, four D, five D, eight D makes no difference. It's all God, and God is all there is. There isn't anything else. I don't think what Bob, what Bob said. What Bob said. Count as that. Okay, just so we understand <laughs> that. No. Okay. Go, so, yeah, look, uh, Alpha, I mean, what we seem to be talking about is a different perspective. You know, if you I think want so. To, if you want to describe it from a higher perspective, uh, it's it's a collapsed down with. If you, if you describe it from, if you like, a, a lower vibrational perspective, it's it's a move upwards. It really doesn't matter. It's an evolution from one state to another. Exactly. And, that's all it is. You're given because a the, form in a higher yeah, form in a higher form in a higher form. Well, to me, the, the one of the one of the things that that the veil system, if I can call it that, did was create these artificial divisions. And if you simply remove that, everything will, will become one. But it will be at that higher level of vibration. That's the way that I'm reading where we're headed. Of course. Right, exactly. And so to, 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 well, I don't want us to get too bogged down in you know what direction Semantics. this thing flows. It right, just right. flows to me. It's just a, a shift. Right. All question, I'm saying is you, all of us will have a new body, okay, and it won't be a 3D body unless this world remains in 3D. I can okay. agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I yeah. think, yeah, if we had the time to discuss it, and I would like to discuss it, okay, you know, not where we're living on a radio show, I think we can all agree and put it into different words. Hang on one second, please. Well, we're actually down to two minutes left. <laughs> yeah. Neighbor's dog yeah, and my go, dog. We can go um, into the archives some if you guys don't mind. But Sure, no. No, I think, again, when we can discuss it, I think we can all agree. All I'm saying, okay, and I've said to Lisa for eternity since I've known Lisa, the 3D body, okay, you're not the body. You are that which possesses the body. And I think we can all agree that everything is energy, everything is consciousness. Yep. Okay? Okay. That consciousness will have a form. The consciousness that is you, that is Brian Kelly, Bob Wright, Chris Hales, Lisa Harrison, Sean Clark, Al Farah, well, Ed. Hang on, that before you keep going, I just want to talk will have a to form. the... Talk to the audience and let them know that we've only got 90 seconds to go. The it seems like the conversation just got really interesting. So if you want to listen, either call in. There's still a few lines left open, and and or listen to the archives because it sounds like we're going to go over just a little bit. So thank you again for listening, and please join in tomorrow for the Enjoy Show with Judy and Brian. Uh, not the same time, an hour earlier. Same channel, of course. <clears throat> I don't know. Have you got guests on tomorrow, Brian? Uh, yeah, we have a amazing guest. Her name is Kellyanne, and it is one of uh, Judy's contacts. So I don't know much about her, but I will find out, and I'm going to post on my blog tonight. Okay, lovely. Be Thank you. Do you know, Lisa, you can tell them if they want to listen in the archive, they can call in right now before it cuts off or yeah, get on site and listen. Yeah, she said that. I did. She did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, thank you, everybody. It's been um, it's been an interesting conversation and an interesting show. And if you are interested in having a look more at our teachings, please go to alpharad.com. And uh, sorry to interrupt you, Alf, but keep going. Oh no, no, I wasn't going. I was waiting. Chris, Chris was Chris was speaking, and then we're going to take it from there. Chris.
Yes. Was it? Okay. Or whoever was speaking last, yeah. I uh, think no, we, no, no, I think it was me. We, we, we yeah, were just, Bob we just agreed. decided. Yeah, we just decided it was the, the language was was correct. We're just describing the same thing from two perspectives. The question I right. have is, what is the process by which we drop the physical body and 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 actually, you know, retain our consciousness in a light body? If we're going to talk about that process yes. a little bit, because I think that that's on an, people's minds. That was an entire radio show that mm-hmm. we did. And in mm-hmm. t- actually, it was four shows, okay? The Science of the Soul and what was the thing on the star that you are, mm-hmm. okay? Those were hours of explaining it, and I, believe me, I can explain what you understand, okay? I can explain out to you piece by piece by piece by piece by piece in the show, The Star That You Are, okay? And on the Science of the Soul shows. But The Star That You Are talks about the entire process. A little, And the book talks a little bit about it going from here to the astral, into 5D, okay? And it's, it's the process that we come here to do, and it's been done over and over and over and over and over. Now, it changed a little bit since Christ ascended, and everybody's fragmented from there, okay? But, yeah, it's a progression. 3D, 4D, you have fifth density you are building, okay? If, let's say, the world as we know it would come to an end, let's say the Earth turns into a star, Okay, have, have you ever discussed that one, Bob? I mean, yes. the possibility? Okay. Yes. Okay. Every single soul uh, incarnate that had achieved the fifth density vibration, that's what we're all working to, okay? Because it took a lot just to come down. We didn't just, boom, appear here. It took a lot to come down. And it's almost like a loop and a lot to go back up. But every single soul that achieved fifth density would continue in your next or the next form. Okay? But all I'm saying, and Bob agreed, is, yeah, we will continue, but not in the 3D flesh body. Okay? But you will have the ego, okay? it will go with you, which means you will have the memories and everything else. Okay? It takes both pieces to create one new thing. And who is Skyping me? You know, one of the things, Alf, you and I had talked about this at one point, because I, I had the question months ago. Well, you're the scientist. Go ahead and do that. I'll tell you what, while you talk, let me get a drink, because I haven't moved. Sure. For oh, yeah, we didn't take a break on this show. Okay, welcome back. And, Alf, are you with us again? Yep. Oh, Just I'm sure you did my mic. Okay. We actually just... have one caller who's been sitting on for the whole time. So sure. Are you? Are you up for taking a call? Are you sure they just haven't been listening? It's a caller? They do have their hand up. They got their hand up. Mm-hmm. Am I up for taking a call? Sean's willing to take all calls, so you just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Area code 209. Are they there? Are you there? Area code 209? Uh, yes, that's me, but I'm just listening. Uh, okay, lovely. So. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. So what's your You're question? welcome. I'm just <laughs> her so question is question? her question is why did you bother her? <laughs> <laughs> no, they are yes. a question if you I have hate one. being I hate you guys interrupting it. Just please keep the flow going. <laughs> I recognize that voice actually. I recognize that voice. I'm not it's sure if I can put... That's what I thought. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it's it? Sharon. <laughs> oh, Sharon one, one of our people. Figures. Hi Sharon. Hi, Hi Alvia. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sean, and all the rest. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Hello. Hi, Sharon. We're going to have to get some. It's a wonderful show. I can't wait to re-listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need snacks. Thank you. All right, something, I'll back about, up. something about Lisa's shows always bring out the best in everything. I don't know why, but they do. Oh, <clears throat> you love me. Hey, by the way, Alf, this is not just Lisa's show, okay? So, come on. <laughs> okay, 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 that's right. We, we got Bob and Chris. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, but she's got the lion. I'm a, I'm oh, a, I'm a perpetual her. guest. Host. Dude, let's, let's just guest. be real serious. Let's be real serious. I mean, all y'all are great, okay? But the name that brings the people is Lisa Harrison. Uh, I was actually going to say, Alf. Um, you know, there's there's four guys here, five guys, and uh, you know, I still feel a bit outnumbered. What about you? <laughs> you should be. No, one thing I am honest about 
in I tell everybody anything we have we owe it to what Lisa did for us being on her show a year a year and eight months ago and anybody who doesn't say that and you guys have helped a lot I don't need to name the names of all the other shows that came from Lisa that are all doing well and of course some of them have Chris's help but they got to know where it came from and it came from Lisa Harrison and, okay, uh, thank I am adamant you. about that yeah, it's a fact it's no joke okay Nope. Well, who's, crunk, who's crinkling something? Sure isn't me. Sorry. Sorry. It's Bob. Yeah. I, was, I was just getting a Twizzler. Um. <laughs> oh, no. I think Bob is crinkling the universe to make everything Let collapse. Let man eat his tw- Twizzler. For we are out. definitely 3D human here. <laughs> okay, let's get back to where we were, pick up where we left off, because it was really okay. getting interesting. So, I I think, wait a minute. I, I'm just hearing how interesting the chat was. I heard the chat. Was uh, the first half was great, the second half it got kind of wild and crazy. I love it. These people. Is that are... right? Yeah, you yeah. Have, a, have a knack for catalyzing people. I tell you. Oh, uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I heard these people. They hate you. It's a bit... <laughs> I, 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 I want to hear. I'm just hearing about the people that are going into ascension chambers to take off, right? <laughs> uh huh. No, <laughs> convert making... to yeah, their I'll crystalline go, oh, wow. DNA. Hey, I'm <laughs> laying in mine right now. <laughs> Dude, it feels amazing. Love. He goes between that and his deprivation tank, so. We, I, 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 think, I'm trying I, think, to... I think the last thing we left off at is that which but is... Bob and I at least agreed that the things are changing. Okay. That yes. which is 3D will cease to be. Well, I'm still there chuckling, trying to, trying to reconcile Bob the guru, Bob who just just opens his mouth and, you know, changes the universe. He's unwrapping a twinkler. <laughs> Twizzler. 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 Sorry, Twizzler. Oh, Twizzler. Maybe, maybe you guys don't have Twizzlers in Australia. <laughs> Obviously not. Uh, no. But they're it's, like it's, the li- it's like licorice. licorice. It is licorice. Oh, okay. By the way, Bob, okay. I went to Walmart. We have something more in common. Look at that. I went to Walmart yesterday, and we bought a package of strawberry Twizzlers and ate them all night. <laughs> they're great. I got watermelon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, guys, as fascinating as this is, can we get back on top? <laughs> yeah, I'm almost sorry I brought that up. <laughs> I got a no, question wait, for I... Sean. I got a question for Sean. Well, yeah. okay, okay. That was 60 pages. Wow. We, can you hold Sean, your question for well, two well, seconds? <laughs> well, I was just going to ask you what your favorite flavor of Twizzler is. But... Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I don't even know the flavors. Isn't there um... Chihuahua. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> Chihuahua. Jeez. Guys, we've got into the recording. We've got overtime, so let's not yeah, wait. Yeah, let's it. let's put some good stuff in here at least. Come on. Yeah, and, it, and it's limited to three hours. Actually, you can't go past that. We found out. Yeah, two so. fifty. Well, two fifty nine. Need to go long, so let's get on with it. Okay. Um, um, Bob, wait. We did not agree that three D is going away. Um, I mean, three no. D will never go away as a dimension. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alf. We're talking. He means this world. We're talking about this world. Yeah, yeah, that's different. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's not saying, no, of course it wouldn't go away. Right. Okay, somewhere there's 3D, right? Right, it's always, yeah. But look, I, I had talked to Alf about this, because I know what you guys are, are looking around. You're looking at this world. You're saying, this place is beautiful. It's taken millions and millions of years to get it to where it is, okay, to get these bodies to where they are. We like this place, right? If it wasn't for all the BS, if it wasn't for all the pain and the the hate and the you know what I mean? All the manipulation and all the ignorance. This could be a. This could be heaven, right? If everyone was unveiled, this but could isn't be heaven. That what we're doing? Heaven and earth merging. Okay, but I'm just saying it's beautiful, right? We look around, and it's beautiful, and we think, why? W- what else could we possibly want? And I said that to Alf. I said, why would we ever, like, why would you get rid of this? And he basically said, you don't understand, and this is what I realized at the same time, how can you even know, okay, if you haven't seen if you haven't seen what we're building on the other side, how can you know? How can you even know what you're – you don't even know how good this is without knowing the rest of the story. Okay, does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. In other words, this is all we know right now. Okay, except for those who have experienced more than this and know what the other dimensions have and so forth. But how can you even know? Maybe this world is 10% or 1% of what we're capable of or what we've already built on the other side. Um, 
you know, when you're in a factory and you're building something and that's all you know is the factory and you're building, 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 and you have no idea that outside the factory is a beautiful garden with beautiful things that you've created, you just haven't been out there to see it yet and you're afraid, oh no, they're gonna they're gonna stop the factory and tear it down. That's that's exactly what the point I was trying to make when I was saying earlier how what we're going through is so unprecedented and I think that's what causes so much of the mass confusion is that so many quote unquote light workers, gurus, spiritual teachers they all talked about – well, back a year ago, it was all about what life beyond two, December 21st, 2012 was going to be like. Mm-hmm. Everybody had their own version. Yeah. Um, some like others, yep. some very some very different. Well, December 21st came and went, and yes, there was some, a, some big went. energetic triggering that, 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 that uh, have, has paved the way for a lot of what's happened in, in 2013. But everybody that, that talked about here's what – December 22nd, 2012 is going to be like, was proven in that instant to be wrong. And, you know, that's why... No, no, no. Okay. Well, you're saying everybody. I was one of the people that said, excuse hey, me, you're going to wake so up, many, it's going to be the same. So many of the predictors. Thank so you. The predictors out there. Most, how about most all of them. Most all of them. We heard it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what the whole countdown show was about. We had 11 people yeah. come on, 10 people that's come on, that's and that's give their own version of what it was going to look like. That's and... Some and of them had you how many very books specific I read. ideas. What Peter always tells me, and it's one thing we like about each other, and Peter said, I love you, Alf. You were on Lisa's show, and you said it ain't going to happen, and it's going to be this. And I said, thank you, Peter. Okay? Peter Shelton I was referring to. Thank you, Peter. Right? But, no, I agree. But what if the next step is in, in – if, like some people say – we're creator gods, and I say, well, no, we're creating creator gods. Okay, we are creator god to be. What if the next step is your world just like this one, and you are the god of it? That, that's – see, there you go. Now we're talking because well, okay. what, we, what we have the ability right now, what we have the ability right now is it to do is to allow people to let go of all their attachments of what they think – the future beyond some higher dimensional merger, whatever it might be, whatever you want to call it, ascension, evolution of consciousness, what it may, might be like, and start co-creating the reality they want to live only right now. Because now is all we have. Well, that's it. The present moment in the now is the only time that any of us hold power. You know that way. That way, we we let go of the old, you know, sitting around waiting for things to have an energy. I mean, we've talked about that on our shows multiple times over the last six months. You know, everybody's just getting real anxious. Oh, waiting for this and waiting for that, and 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 just oh, I'm so sick of waiting. It's just like <laughs> let. What are they go. waiting for? Yeah, what, what are they waiting for? What are they waiting for? That was a revelation for me. It was that, like, shit, that's the thing that gets me. For? That's the thing that gets me. So many people, okay, I mean, yeah, you have you have the atheists, right, that think it's all about science. And you have the religious people who just believe whatever they were born with, okay, or whatever someone tells them. But then you have, you know, the spiritual people, the New Age people think that they're all about the truth. And a lot of them really have just fooled themselves in a new way. Instead, they're about escaping or they're about just being healthy. Well, all good. I mean, it's good good to be healthy, right? It's good to help the planet. There's a lot of good things, but I mean, do you want to do yoga and eat veggies or do you want to know what's true and what's real? And those are different questions. I mean, so many people out there, they really just want to escape their problems, they want to escape evil, they want to escape the planet. They they don't know what they even want. And they, and they're not they don't have the courage, it seems, to focus on what's real, regardless of whether they approve of it or not. You have to realize that whatever's real might not be what you like. I mean, truth doesn't wait for you to – it doesn't need your approval. <laughs> it is what it is, and you need to you need to be able to stay open and, and – mm-hmm. And be able to see what's actually there and not just be chasing rainbows or chasing, you know, feeling good all the time or 
um, escaping something. I mean, we're here to live this world, not to escape it. But, <laughs> Sean, you uh, just reminded yeah, me. There's a whole series of videos called "The Shit New People, the New Age People Say." <laughs> no, yeah, I love this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, they've I, gone. Way, they've gone too far. They've gone. You know, they've confined themselves to one direction. To me, the the you know one of the aspects of incarnating here is to to have as an well for me to have as an objective to experience the full range of emotions, mm-hmm. but yeah. remain in ba- but remain in balance. Okay, not not to <clears throat> polarize one way or polarize the other, but to experience them both in balance, and to do that without trampling on other people's free will choices. That's a game. That's a that's a really that's a tightrope, if you like. But it's still fun because you know, you're experiencing everything. It's not like you're if you want to just stay quiet in the corner, you can stay in balance, but it'll be boring. You might as well be in five D. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I recommend. I just heard this from one of our people that are in the chat room, is that uh, the GFL is handing out ascension chambers, and uh, I want one. How do I get one? <laughs> long as it <laughs> comes, as long, long as it comes with an yeah, infrared, yeah. L, with infrared LED um, sauna, yeah. sauna light. Did you, yeah. did you sign up for a prosperity package, <laughs> Al? I hear that. No, this, no uh, yeah, I'm in. No, my 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 lady is telling me that yeah, the GFL is handing out. Um, ascension chambers, and I said, "Well, wow, can I have one? Let's get one for Lisa, Bob, and everybody else too. I mean, then we got nothing Ooh. to worry about. We don't even need to do nothing. Maybe we'll we just... can get a group discount. Has it got? Uh, yeah, a good... there you go. Look, do they? If they got a good sound system, I'm in. <laughs> hey, I'm going to send you guys a link. Um, something I just came across tonight called 12 Steps for the Recovering New Ager. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of funny, Alf. I sent it on to Murray. Well, you know oh, the wow. thing. I mean. We have so many different disciplines, but one thing, okay, about the religious. The religious are actually, okay, even though they may be more set in their ways, but they're actually easier to deal with and show the truth to than any of the spiritual people. And why that is, because they have a book, okay? They all tie their understanding to the Bible. And when you can show them what the Bible really says, I mean, it's very difficult, okay? Um, changing how they've been taught the Bible, because Christians being taught the Bible is not the same as what the Bible says. Christian theology, understanding, teaching is not biblically sound in many cases. But at least they have a book you can show them, listen, here's what the book really says. And some of them, okay, some even pastors I've dealt with said, well, wow, I see what you're talking about. But the thing with the spiritual people is there's so much stuff out there, so many gurus and Brian's and teachers and material and we all, like the ego is the God of you. It decides you what you understand. And it cuts and pastes everything it likes. And it fills in the gaps in which you don't know. And everybody's a guru. So you well, can't then, really. And then ahead, they're huh? taught, well, whatever you resonate with, right? Well, so then they think. Oh, yeah, I well, love that one. Yeah, if it feels good, well, then it must be. That must, must be, be the right. truth. If it feels good, right? <laughs> I mean. Well, come on. We don't want to make this a bag the new age session. No, no, no. True, true, true. I don't know how we got there. Well, what's for what what's what's the big take? I mean, Lisa, you 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 have um, a lot of experience going in and out of these types of discussions over many years. I mean, what's the big what's your big aha takeaway from this? Are we how how long are we taking it? My big aha. <laughs> Firstly, that Alf didn't slap me about the head for even going where I went. That was that was good. I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, I can't. Anybody else would have gotten five slaps. <laughs> <laughs> that I can see. Oh, how can I put it? That even though we're not exactly on the same page uh, about, I mean, I think, I think you, Alf, know better than anybody what has been, and you can tell it. Without hesitation, and you can you know it. I do. I honestly believe you know it. And it's the question of, about what's coming. Okay. Yeah. That, wait. Let, let me ask you. Rest- I'll ask a real good question, real quick. Go ahead. Okay. Alf, we never do this. Uh, other than I know you and I are going to be working on this this second book, but for everyone listening, okay, and everyone on this call. 
what should we be doing for the next three to six months? Forget how where it's going to end up and any dates and what's on the other side of the wall and everything else. What should we be doing for the next? What should be doing? What should we be doing now? Mm-hmm. What should people well, I, be doing? I can only the, uh, see. I don't, think there, chamber. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any across the board answer for that. I, I, I can tell you what I know. I need to be doing <coughs> for the next six months. Well, yeah, me too. Go ahead. I, I know that. You know, but for me. It, but but what I but but what what I feel I should be doing for the next six months, I, I'm not going to say it applies to everybody. I don't think right. there is any universal thing that everybody can or should be doing in order to um, get us any closer, make things happen faster. I don't think that there's any control on on that kind of level that we have over whatever it is that's unfolding. Well, Alpha is the same ex- way. Yeah, that's something Excellent. I two years Excellent. ago I asked him, well, what should I be doing? Or maybe it was three years ago. And I really respected his answer was, well, I can't tell you what to do. It's your life. You need to figure it, right? No one – there is no ideal way to live. Yeah, Exactly, same, and exactly what Brian said. But, but at, at the, the same time – But at the same time, that doesn't mean – for instance, we've been teaching on the website, Alf's been teaching, um, how to stop incurring karma. How to stop trespassing against people? How to stop even thinking trespass against people? Um, because that could be important moving ahead. Obviously, the, the world country. and the system people, is. I think people go ahead, need Bob. to be authentic. They need to be themselves. They they first need to discover themselves, because there's so much. Stuff that they believe that's themselves, that's not themselves. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but they need to discover themselves, and then, then they need to be themselves. And that translates into whatever doing that they're doing, or they choose to do. But the, it's got to come from that space of authenticity. But how do of, they discover that? Well, they discover that by, by removing by removing that which is not authentic. That which is not them, that which they have adopted, or that which they have used to mm-hmm. mask themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you're talking about overcoming See, ego. And, and, and well, I think that the, 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 the higher self, the universe, is going to guide the experience into all of our lives at this time to allow us the ability to have the experience to be able to do what Bob is talking about. You know, I've talked about this quite a bit in, in recent, especially since we got back to, to Africa, is. I'm talking more about – less about what's going on in the world lately. I'm talking more about what's going on in the world within me because I'm seeing the world through a new set of lenses. I'm, 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 well, of course my perspectives are. are completely changing. And when we – when I, I know for me, yes, being authentic, speaking my truth, standing in it no matter what kind of judgment I'm going to receive from others and just finding my place – that allows me to experience life, live it to its fullest, and be in joy. And at any opportunity that I have, share that with with others. That's you know that's that's for, for me has become all all I really all I really think about. You know, anytime that something is uh, brought across my desk or allows me to share that with others or be of service to others, because we've talked about it on the on our show, hum, serving humanity. Through also serving myself, I, don't, I, I get real stuck and hung up on people that go, you know, oh, you know, service to self is so bad and service to others is so good. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't really agree with that anymore. I think the service to others, service to self is ultimately service to others. You know, when I work on my own, I agree. It, my own yeah, development, yeah, my own personal development, and I, I shine and I'm authentic and I'm raw and I'm, I'm bringing joy to this world, well, that – is service to others and the greater whole, you know? So mm-hmm. I, well, yeah, I always well, say it's, it's service to others because you're a be- you're a better son, you're a better friend, you're a better father, you're a better mate, you're a better right. – By you focusing know, on what, yourself, what looks selfish. What I always say, people, yep. when I teach the students, before you can save anybody else, first of all, you've got to save yourself, yeah. okay? And before first you, can you help create else, yourself. Well, yes, <laughs> okay? Yes, 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 yes. Of course it's a self, but in serving yourself, you serve others. In fact, I talked about, you know, Conversations with God, the book. He talks about the five greatest words that God said. Uh, you don't really even know me or whatever it is. He says, no, the five greatest things ever said were said by Christ. And if we all did them, this world would change in one week. 
love thy neighbor as thyself. It really is that simple. I teach you to choose to lose. I've had all the students. For one week, no matter what, I want you to put the other person in front of yourself. No matter what they ask. I mean, somebody asks for $100,000. No, of course not. But choose in the other person's best interest. Choose to lose. Okay? I want you all to try it. Everybody tried it. It was very difficult. Almost impossible. But part of the time they did do that. Put the other person first. If just those five little words that Christ spoke, love thy neighbors that self. If this 3D world could do that, everybody could do that for even one week. Could you imagine the transformation, Bob? I mean, could you? <laughs> yeah, I can. Well, well that's, that's, that's yeah. the whole thing. I, I think that where we're moving to cannot or hasn't, well, it has been imagined on some level, but in in this form, we can't possibly know because we haven't experienced it yet but we're, we're moving towards something better <laughs> and I, I i don't know what it looks like i have a, a a taste of what it kind of feels like but i don't know the system is changing and this world will not continue growing light through darkness huh but that's, I think it, the key point is that that doesn't mean this world will not continue. No, no, I didn't say that. No, it will not continue as it is. Okay? I don't, I'm not saying it won't not continue. You and I had this conversation in private, remember? We were SMSing, and you said yeah, that. Yeah, I know, but that, that's because it was private. Not everybody was in well, on it. Well, yeah, no, it <laughs> doesn't mean it won't continue. But I promise you it will change. And those that will remain here... This world, they're not going to dissolve it unless the earth becomes a star, like a lot of people think, right? And it explodes and we go into everything's 5D. There is no more 3D here on this world. But as this world continues, the system, this may be the heaven on earth that we've all talked about, that the Bible even talks about, right? To talk about the thousand years peace with Christ, heaven on earth, That's what Revelation talks about in the end. That may be how this planet transforms, and we may stay in the 3D body. Okay, it may be a hybrid 3D, 4D body. A lot of things are possible, but I can tell you one thing for sure: this world is changing. I don't and think I don't think you're going to get any argument from anybody no, on no that one. Argue. Well, uh, let yep. me tell you, big time changes. I'm not telling you George Kavasilis, you know, it, it's ending in March, but I'm telling you this: less than two years this place will be a little bit different and the people that are here will be of a little bit different type. Well, what do you see? Tell me. I can't tell you, Isa. I don't know. Okay. Or I'm hedging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you hedging? Because I, I, because you, Lisa, is, hey, you is know what? Because there's, you there's don't, only, I was no, going to say, is this because you... Exactly. Uh, whoops, sorry. I'm jumping on you, Al. Keep going. That's all right. I'm going to answer what you're saying. No, it's not that I don't know. I have a really good idea. Okay, he doesn't keep a lot of secrets from me. Okay, but what I can tell you, I tell you. When I screw up, I take it back. There was nobody I would tell before Lisa, except one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason being, okay, the reason being is we've seen it happen, and some people think I get too secretive about stuff. But no, I put one little thing out there. And then, man, it's on Facebook, and this one's repeating, and that one's repeating it. And it's not that – that's great. It's out there for them. But they're not explaining it properly because I only give bits and pieces. Okay, I don't give you the whole thing. You've got to assemble it yourself because if you don't assemble it yourself, it doesn't make any difference me telling you this is what's going to happen. Oh, well, it's just somebody else told you something. If you don't connect the dots for it and see it, the whole thing. So, yeah, okay. But I want it in the book so at least it will be copyrighted. At least I said it, and I explained it out. But other than that, there's no other place I tell it than Lisa. But, yeah, there's some big changes coming, big ones. And, Lisa, I would tell you and the guys in private, but I'm not going to tell it on your radio show. Okay? Okay, well, that's the end of the show, and <laughs> we will stop the recording. <laughs> I didn't just piss you off, did I? <laughs> I just want the answer. I don't care how I get it. Oh, Okay. <laughs> 
That lion is going to grab you by the neck, Alf. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. See, we know you've already posted some stuff that got thrown off, or, or you were yeah, forced yeah, to pull it back. I so, did, so, so we know that there's there's stuff that we're not ready for yet, apparently. I, well, see, that's the thing, Chris. Okay, right? It's like people ask me, "What's my angel name?" and "Who's my archangel?" Just that. I said, "What's the difference if I tell you? Will you believe me? How do you know it's true? Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about." What happens when it disagrees with what you understand? And that is the problem when you're talking, like, who's been saying it, Bob or Chris? Something that hasn't happened yet, or Brian, maybe. Something that hasn't happened yet, how are we to know? Was that you, Brian? You're that was Bob, that. Bob. Bob. That was Bob. Bob. Yeah. That's, That's it. Just we don't it. know it. We don't know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, what is Alf just making this stuff up? Okay. But I'll tell you what, and Sean can attest in every one of my students, everything I've said from the beginning until the day has happened. I told them there's a new creation coming, and here comes Lisa and you guys. Okay? I told them the system is changing, and the system is. Okay? They all ask for times and this and that. I don't give them the times. But everything that I've said, Sean, has it not happened? Have we not seen it play out in humanity? Well, this is the big one, I guess, now with these guys. But Well, yeah, with these guys. I've been telling them this has happened for six months since the very first Transforming Humanity show. Okay? And I've been talking about what's going to happen. But you can't just lay it all out there because you'll have, you know, I don't want to be those who predicted doom, okay? Not only do I want to be those who predicted doom, nobody knows the time. I told you this. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's more important what you don't predict. Exactly. (laughs) Nobody knows the time. See, look up. Sorry, I'll jump in again. Time, it's okay, Chris, just hang your thought. Time, and I said this on the first Lisa show. Time plays out through our choices. Time actually goes forward and backwards depending on the choices of humanity. It affects the timeline. Well, one thing I learned from from the indigenous people here, which is different to, say, working with the Mayan calendar or any other calendar which says things are going to happen on a particular date, they work with the idea and completely that things are event-driven. They're not calendar agreed. driven. They're right, not... right, right. Oh, agreed. See, it's like right? it's like it's cause and, and, and effect, event driven. The Bible, I think, uses architect and builder, right, Alf? No, it's not, like not, not, yes, but no. It's more of the more esoteric works, like the Nag Hammadi, okay. right? They but use I mean, that. I, I'm I've been a construction guy for a long time. Okay, you take a, you design a building, right? Here's your plan. You have a drawing that the architect gives you. Okay, you then. St- you then build the thing, and it may take six months, may take a year, whatever it is. But you know where you're starting, okay? You have your bare piece of ground or whatever, and you know what it looks like based on the picture. And you know that you're going to figure it out as you go along, but you don't know. No one knows exactly when that okay, building I'm is going to be finished. off now. Why? I'm pissed off now. Lisa's pushed my buttons about what giving her the answer, giving her the answer, giving her the answer. <laughs> Let me tell you this, Okay. Let me tell you this. Both the Bible and four or five different passages, okay, the Nag Hammadi, the Dead Sea Scrolls, all of the Apocrypha, all of the Pseudographia, all of the divinely inspired works say that when the time comes, the world will end in fire. So let me say this, and you can put it down. I agree. Now, that is interesting based on a conversation that was running off earlier in one of the chat rooms that we're in in, in Skype. That, um, Bob and Brian might know what I'm talking about. There's a channeling <clears throat> that gets published called Gaia Portal. And it was put out the other just recently, the other day within the last 48 hours and it talked about fire mm-hmm. and the fires uh, the planet is on fire within or something the volcanoes and I can't remember exactly what it said and there was a whole group of us who were talking about the fact that over the last week we've all smelt smoke or smelt a fire and actually thought we were like I've, I was on the phone with uh, Vera one day sitting outside and I had to go inside to check that the house wasn't on fire. Huh. It smelled like an electrical fire. And it's happened about three times. But it, in this one little chat room, 
four or five people have experienced the same thing, smelling either an electrical fire or a, or seeing smoke, but not it's not coming from any particular source. Or it's, that's bizarre that you say that. Well, if anybody really wants to read, okay, and see, and I guarantee it's just like this creator showed me just like this, okay, and this is probably the best description, okay, and it's one of the most informative passages in the Bible. Read 1 Corinthians 15. Read the whole thing, okay? Uh, it will blow your mind if you can understand it spiritually, and I think all of you guys are able to do that. that? Read 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, okay, right, and start it. Start at 22 and read all the way to 58, okay? And I'll just read one passage from I have this thing so underlined and highlighted, and they taught me this and taught me this and made sure I understand it, okay? And here you go. Let me just read this part to you, Lisa. Now I say this. This is Paul speaking. Who is the archangel Gabriel? Okay, now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's the celestial realm. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, which means die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead, okay, those are our physical bodies, okay, shall be raised incorruptible, or what's in them. No, no, we, I thought that was the egos. No, it is, it is. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, okay. Let me not translate, let me just read. Shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on in corruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Okay? So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Okay? And I left a lot out, but what I'm saying, everybody will be changed. Okay, can but I anyway, ask, can I ask Bob Fire, 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 Lisa. So you got me to admit to that. Bob, you're the the Bible scholar in our group. <laughs> you're familiar with that passage? Very familiar. Um, How have you always interpreted it? This and is has what that a lot changed? Of, a lot of people would, would refer to as the rapture. Um the transfiguration. Uh, I've always understood it to mean just what it says. Yeah, it's pretty clear. The Bible is basically literal, except when that, it's metaphor and parable. <laughs> that there would be, and how I interpret it today is, I mean, from a scientific point, the electron is jumping a valence. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're... we're well, becoming, we're we're becoming uh, a different type of matter, energy. I don't know how to. Well, yeah, it's exactly what's happening. Transformation. Yeah, hey, we're hey, getting lighter, lighter, whenever, lighter and lighter. Whenever I hear the word fire in in this kind of context, especially in, in biblical references, a lot of the times I feel it's actually referring to consciousness. Okay. Rather than rather than literal fire, you know, in in in, in energetic, uh, if you like, uh, shift in consciousness. Well, now, fear of fire is used to, to mean Lucifer and to mean incarnation well, yeah. too in incarnation the Bible. Incarnation too. Okay. But again, just like Brian said, is Brian still with us, or did he drop yeah, off? Yeah, he's there. Okay, I'm he's here. Just, he's been so quiet, right? I'm going. What is he doing? Man, I've been sitting on a computer for 12 hours. I'm just tired. I do. <laughs> but no, if you want to read it, read read all of 1 Corinthians 15. Start at verse 22, okay? Uh, one of the things that's so important, okay, it's like some men will say, how are the dead raised up, and what body do they come with? Okay, how do you ascend with what body? This is always Lisa's question. You fool, that which you sow, which is grow, is not made alive except to die. And that which you sow, you sow not that body that it shall be, but bare grain, that's we all start with bare grain. It may be wheat, okay, or it may be something else. But God gives it, okay, the soul, the seed, a body as it has pleased him. And every seed has its own body. 
But I see fire, okay, just we asked, okay, I see fire as transformation. The phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. Out of the ashes, boom, mm -hmm. comes something new. Mm -hmm. That's the fire I see. And that's what I can tell you about. And, um, yeah, I see total transformation of everything. All right? I'm not saying this world comes to an end, but fire. You made me mad, Lisa Harrison. Not really. Why? You just pushed my buttons until you made me tell you something to get you off my back. <laughs> yeah, mm. I know. But so there's also, there's a, one of the other contexts for fire is the fires of creation. That is, you know, yeah. something goes through a yeah. transformative process and, and something yeah. else emerges. So it doesn't, the you know. Phoenix. Yeah, exactly, the phoenix. So yeah, yeah. it's very, very much transformation. Yeah. Fire is also like a it refining. Says. It refines things. Right. Mm -hmm. well, we, we shall all uh. change. We shall all be transformed. Okay. Oh, I, I agree, but I think fire is where it's at. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't speak for anybody else, well, pay, perhaps maybe Bob, <laughs> when I say that since returning home from Morocco physically, there is a lot of stuff going on internally with me. Tell me about that. I've been wanting to ask you guys more. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a pro play. Rebecca's going through a process too, so you guys yeah, must big also time. be big time. I know they are. Just come on, give it. Hey, come on, you pound stuff out of me. Tell us. Tell us. Well, I have the headache. Um, oh, has Jill's been going for four or five days now? Constant, right? Oh, that happened to you guys too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> oh my god, I, I literally funny. had a headache for four days when I was over with my grandmother when she was uh, um, on her deathbed. Four days in a row, I woke up taking three. I start my day with three or four ibuprofen. Huh. Well, that never that. happens to me. <laughs> Not me either. Yeah, me and either. I, when I get headaches, they're always in the back of my neck, right? The base of my head. These were at the temples, and across the forehead. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> every time I coughed, it was just boom, bang. Yeah. It was really painful to cough. Um. That's and that's only sort of started to ease off this morning, to be honest. Um, I have probably at least once a day an, ep an episode. I have a bit of a turn um, where I get these energy rushes through my body. Sometimes I feel like my consciousness gets pulled out of my body while it's happening. Mhm. Mm right. Um, spacey. So spacey. Uh, I have to go to sleep yep. sometimes just like that. I can be in the middle of a conversation one moment and, and I yep. have to pass out the next. Um, this and spider does it stop? feeling... Does it, does it stop when you sleep? Sometimes, not always. Okay, okay. Um, often when I have a sleep in that state, I'll have an extraordinary lucid dream. Um... And usually one of these guys turns up, um, Bob or Heather or even Brian or um, Vera. Vera, Vera or Dee, yeah. one of them will turn up at least. Um, yeah, this it's almost like pins and needles, but not. And it can be all over my face and I can't feel my face. And the other day I had that for about an hour and then... I'm, then that feeling actually worked its way all the way down my body. I had that. That uh, scared me the other day. I got up from sleeping, and my face was like numb or something. I got in. I don't know. Maybe I've had neck issues recently, but anyway. I don't want to interrupt you, but it was the weirdest thing. I got in the shower, and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know if I can feel my forehead or my cheek. <laughs> I left my face <laughs> well, yeah. you, you know what I, I've been waiting to hear if somebody would tell me, okay, because you know, I've been expecting side effects, uh, and you know, I haven't heard anything from you guys. Right. Uh, maybe I'll start asking every day because I'm feeling changes to you guys still going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I keep hoping I'll hear. And I haven't asked, I haven't bothered you guys in, in you know since the show. But no, you have to be with this process. Okay, it's of such a magnitude, it's never been done. You have to be having some kind of side effects and residual effects. Oh, and, it's, and there's there's a you, there's a cleansing thing going. Right. Yeah. Um, tell us. Tell us. Yeah. Going. Yeah. Went through the bathroom. I, I don't even know. Like, I, 
things can't stay in my stomach longer than 20, 25 minutes, and it's out. Wow. Okay. Can I tell you something? Honestly, I don't think we've ever been on this, but since you mentioned that, okay. Do you mean throwing up, or do you mean having to go to the bathroom? No, having to go to the but bathroom. Out. Okay, okay, I got you. Now, um, when I eat certain things, okay, this has been happening to me for the last 10 years, okay? Just remember, we are recording, and this will be. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, 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 no. No For example, TMI. like when I eat hard stuff and I eat protein, meat, or chicken once in a while, it doesn't digest. It comes out the next day, right? Mm. Chunky chicken. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> okay, lovely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing it. So. I got to eat but dinner. No, what, I think that's what Bob's saying. Okay, mm. it doesn't digest. It like passes straight through, and it's been happening more and more recently too. Okay, um, you know I tried to stay veggie when I can, but it's hard. And certain things, it's like I don't digest it. It, it, you know. And um, my whole relationship to food but, changed as well, and yeah. I'm not, I'm not eating much of anything. Yeah. May I ask what happens to the twizzers? Twizzers. Uh, <laughs> Do they get digested? Twiz, twiz, twizzers just fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't want me to That's answer good. that one. That's hey, you guys know we're thing. coming up on the cutoff time. That's a new food group. We have seven minutes. We have yeah. seven minutes. This, okay. has been a, this has been an interesting show. Yes, it has. Indeed. Indeed, it has. Also, there's a, a another – now, this isn't necessarily a physical, but I don't know. There's a a new place. I've, I don't – in my meditations, I've reached like it almost locks in. Like I can't describe it. But there's like a, a. You mean place physically that you see, or a vibration that you hit? A vibration. There you go. Okay. That they that I've never experienced before, and and when I hit it, it it literally locks in. It. It's hard to let. You, you don't. It's not one of those things that <laughs> is fleeting. It it just like. <laughs> and it, it lasts for it lasts for a good while. It could last for an hour or so. You're just right. in the this sweet the sweet spot I call it. Yeah. When I when I used to, I don't meditate anymore. But when I used to, and I'd hit that spot, I'd be there. I mean, I finished my meditation, and three and a half hours had gone by. Yeah. I know exactly. Um, I'm la- I'm laughing because I had one of those experiences this morning. My morning meditation. The pins and needles in the face is very interesting, and you should all be getting the back of the neck stuff, like Lisa Lisa described. Yeah. Now the headaches are are, are unusual, but. You know, I can see that happening. But the pins and needles in the back of the neck, okay. But, yeah, you should be having some kind of side effects from this. I've been waiting to hear them. And uh, maybe more you're not talking about. I know you all talk amongst yourselves. But, really, people, I would love to hear this stuff because this is so new, okay. Um, And we see it play out in you, right. And everybody's watching, you know, those above, you know, people here. But, yeah, there has to be some side effects from this. Nobody turning green or getting – Reptilian kind of skin on the left arm or anything like that, right? <laughs> no. I did have uh, – I had an experience that freaked Phil out, though, because um, <clears throat> it was a day that I was really, really not feeling here at all. And I went and laid down, and I immediately thought of Caleb, who was one of the guys that was with us in Morocco, who for all intents and purposes seemed to have had a stroke while we were there. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm having a – or about to have a Caleb moment. Sure. And I called Phil in and I said, look, if anything really strange happens to me and I can't communicate with you, just call Vera, please. <laughs> and um, he asked me what was wrong and I just said, look, I'm just really feeling odd. And he lay down to, he was going to do some energy work on me and he got, ter- he was terrified because he said, you feel like, he didn't tell me at the time, he told me later. He said, uh, you just felt like a meat suit. There was no one there. Hmm. And that I just was not home. And he couldn't, he was trying to send me energy and it wouldn't leave him. It was getting congested in his hands. Mm-hmm. It, it, he wasn't allowed to transfer allowed to, it to yeah. me. Good word. I was going to say it before you did. Wasn't allowed to. Excellent. Excellent. And at the time, Vera sort of did her thing and tuned into me from where she's at. And she was told, um, nothing's wrong. She's perfectly fine. Hands off. Uh, she's just transforming. Yeah. Um, and then later that night, and I still wasn't, this went on for hours, I still wasn't great. 
And again, right. he came to lay down and tried putting some energy and it worked. He was able to, at that point, send me some energy, but he said, you've changed to the point where my whole my whole energy signature had changed, again, essentially, that I was familiar enough, familiar enough to him that he was able to be somewhat comfortable, but he knows that I've fundamentally changed, that I am not the same person. I, well, yeah. I'm, I'm getting the, those comments from people as well. That yep. um, there's there's something different about you. You're you're not the same. I've been I've been told that like uh, I've been called Mr. Spock. <laughs> <laughs> um, Most regular walk-ins get that too. They're just not quite the same. Right. Well, people. Understand, okay, like I said, close to 10,000 walk-ins, okay, from counseling them to participating, okay, and I've never, ever seen it, okay? Never seen it. Yeah, you're not, no, like nothing. There's no comparison on this planet to what's happened to you. It hasn't been done. But again, you you must understand, okay, you're all at different numbers. I think, Bob, you're seven, right, if I recall? Yep. Okay, but you've cut off so many lifetimes from the process. The normal system allows and ensures that it's a gradual increasing of yourself, okay, increasing your vibration, your light frequency through every lifetime. And it may take 60 to 80 to, to 110, depending on the path you choose, to get to where you, you've had this happen. Yeah, there's going to be some physical effects. And that's what I'm waiting to hear. And the creator's watching, and everybody's watching above to see what the fallout's going to be. But like I say, as long as the skin ain't coming off, Lisa, and we get no scales underneath, hey, I'm good with it, right? I have pulled a reptile before, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right, right. No, Peter program. You know, as long as you don't sprout some kind of an antennae and your skin turns gray. <laughs> yeah, I have a tail. Really Is that normal? Good. <laughs> I, I would be, I would be really pissed if you start looking like some ETs or something like that. Boy, I would be pissed. No, like nothing that. like that. I can assure you. We got oh, about I, a minute on the recording, people. We can talk as long as you want, but it's only going to record for about a minute, I think. Yeah, we need to wrap this up, guys. All right, so I want to just thank both of you. Um, this has been a very interesting conversation, and thank the people who have stuck it out for three hours. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. 